brothers, uh, being bound with the three major elements in the world today. And by the three major elements, I'm referring to sex, wine, and drugs. Those are the three things that tend to bind many blacks and Latinos. Uh, I'm not saying it doesn't bind anybody else, but I don't give a damn about any other race, but ours. That's all God cares about, that's all I care about. We're gonna open up with Romans chapter six and verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. So the first thing we gotta acknowledge is not to let sin reign in our mortal body. Uh, Reuben. First John 3 and 4. Can you read that for us, Reuben? First John 3 and 4. That's the first thing as a nation we gotta understand what sin is. Many times we, we'll use the word sin, but we don't really know what it means. Oh, you're in sin, what do you mean? Uh, you do bad things, what do you mean? Uh, I don't know, I don't like the way you do your hair. <laughs> is that sin? Come on, stop. Go ahead, what is sin? First John 3 and 4. Whosoever commit the sin, transgressed also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So, for sin is the transgression of the law. So when you break God's law, no matter how small a law, it's sin. You're breaking God's law. Go back to Romans 6 and 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. So Paul said the first thing you need to know is not to let sin rule you. The word reign means to rule in your body. And guess what? When you start to allow one sin to rule you, yeah, give me a sin. Get, somebody give me a sin. Some, give me something small. Lying. Okay, lying. Nah, that's kind of big. Yeah, I don't like it. Huh? It can be. Okay, people, they call it little white lies. You tell little white lies. That little white lie, it's like, the, you, know, you know, ever play dominoes? The game dominoes. No, no, not the game. The, you know, the one with they all standing next to each other? Oh, numbers. Is that what it's called? Yeah, no. yeah. And you hit one? The domino effect. Domino effect. That's, thank you, the domino effect. One sin affects another. So you can't say, well, I only do one sin. I only tell little white lies. Some little white lies will affect something else in your life. And it'll start to grow and spread. Okay, like tattoos, one brother go, well, I got the commandments tattooed on me. The, the scripture says we are not to get tattoos. So by, he's, by you breaking that law, it's going to affect something else in your life. Guess what, the brother that got tattooed, you know what I'm talking about, that rapper. You know he is real. I'm talking, he called me on the Sabbath. I'm like, where you at? I'm in, I'm in a masseuse, I'm getting me a massage. I'm like, what the hell? I said, bro, today's the Sabbath, get up out of there. Nah, I'll speak to you later. One sin will affect another, no matter how small or how, how minute. People say, oh, you, you don't worry about this one. This sin will affect something else. Yep. Okay, read that again, I think. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. First Samuel 15, 23, thank you. Because when we are, when you allow sin to reign in your mortal body, you are rebellious to the Most High's commandments. And this is what Samuel said regarding, regarding Saul. Verse Samuel 15, verse 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. See that? Rebellion, when you rebel against God's laws, no matter how small, Samuel said that's like the sin of witchcraft. And you know what the law says about witchcraft. It says, suffer not a witch to what? Yeah. Meaning they got to die. So you will have various congregations that will say, don't worry about this law. You don't got to do it. And I'm talking about ordinary. Um, yeah, you got Christians and you got certain laws that we can keep in today's society. I'm not talking about laws that pertain to the temple that you cannot keep. I'm not referring to those laws. Laws that pertain to the temple. Can we keep them? No, because there's no temple here. But there are other laws, laws about tattoos. I'm talking about small laws, laws about tattoos, laws about a you know, bald head, laws about a uh, woman on her menstrual, laws about um, huh? wearing pants. women wearing pants, dress code. Those are, you, somebody may call them little laws, but them laws. Fringes. Right, fringes is another one. Ah, you ain't gotta do that. The Bible said, read that again. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. 
And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. See that? And stubbornness. You are stubborn to God's laws. I don't want to do that. You make excuse after excuse. Why, Lord? Why? Why I gotta do this? It says that's stubbornness and iniquity. Go ahead. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. This is what it said regarding Saul. He hath also rejected thee from being king. Now remember the Bible says about us men, we shall be a nation of what? Kings, Kings and priests. So if the Lord rejected Saul for his rebellious nature, how much more us? How much more us? So if you got that dumb mindset, I could break these little laws. Right, we ain't got to do that. Well, you got some camps that teach that. They're wrong. They're off. Give me that in Matthew 5 about he that teaches a man to break the least. Matthew. Matthew 5 verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass in the law till all be fulfilled. So Christ, the King of kings, Lord of lords, let all us know the law is in full effect until heaven and earth pass. Go ahead. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. Whosoever shall break one of these least commandments, like the fringes, like growing hair on your head, like a woman wearing pants, like fringes, like tattoos, like eating swine. These are little laws. Go ahead. Huh? Hundred, all right, there's another law. 100% garment. Go ahead. And shall teach men so? And you teach men so. Now, you teach men in two ways. How do you teach men? Barak Bar, what are two ways that you teach men? Give them the mic. There are two ways that we teach. How? One way is to teach by example. By example. Very good. Word of mouth. How about that? Okay. You teach it, right? Yes. All right. Now, did you read on that? Time? No. Whosoever, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. And he's going to explain what he means by you shall be called least in the kingdom. Because right now some of you are saying, oh, I'll just be a doorkeeper in the kingdom. Is that what he's talking about? Read the next verse. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Meaning hypocrisy. Ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So he's explaining what the least means. You shall in no case enter the kingdom. So you're not going to be a doorkeeper. Me in church, I'll just be a doorkeeper in the temple of the Lord. No, you ain't. Yeah, bomb holder. <laughs> Go back to Romans 6 and 12. So I want this thought to resonate in all of us. Verse 12. Romans 6, verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. So don't let sin rule you. Like I said, you break one law, you're going to start to break the rest. You're going to make excuses law after law. Go ahead. Because imagine this. you home with your wife. You tell your wife. She says, do we got to keep the law fringes? And you say, no. And your, your wife says, oh, what about the law of... Give me another little one we said. Cooking on the Sabbath. Okay, cooking on the Sabbath. No, we ain't got to keep that. Guess what might come out of her mouth? I'm going to wear these pants. And then you go, oh, you can't do that. And she going to look at you, but wait a minute. You just told me all oh, this we ain't got to do. Now when I'm telling you we ain't got to do, now there's a problem in the house. You're a hypocrite, brother. You're a hypocrite. Read on. That you should obey in the lust thereof. Come on. Neither, ye, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness. So, read on. Unto sin. Read the whole part again. Sir. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. So don't yield your members. Your, your, your members. That goes into your thoughts, your hands, your mouth, unto members of unrighteousness. Go ahead. But yield yourselves unto God. But yield yourselves unto God. Come on. As those that are alive from the dead. Because all of us that have repented, we are alive from the dead. I hope you all understand that. We are alive from the dead. Once we heard this truth, we repented of our sins, we are alive from the dead. Go ahead. That dead state. Because guess what? Our people are in a dead state. Our people are in a dead state of mind. Go ahead. And your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Meaning what? Keep the commandments. Go ahead. For sin, for sin shall not have dominion over me, do over you, you. Do you see that? For sin shall not have dominion, dominate you. Sin shall not dominate your life. Go ahead. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What does that mean? For ye are not, but ye are not, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What does that mean? Hmm. 
Mike. For you are not under law, but under grace. You're not under law, meaning the law of sacrifice, you're under grace. Like in uh, Romans 12. What does grace mean? Grace meaning we are under Christ now. Right. So now, who can give me two other terms used in Hebrews 8? No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Stand back up. Yeah. When you say under Christ, what are we talking about? Explain it. Meaning under Christ, meaning we no longer under the Lord's sacrifice. Christ is the sacrifice. We now have to present ourselves as a sacrifice. Like in uh, Romans 12. What's another word for grace? Uh, mercy. That's the word I want to hear. All oh, that's what you're right, but I want to make sure you understand it. But that ain't the word I want. Now that's good, that's good words, but there's another word. For we are not under the law, but under grace. It's saying two things. We're not under what, but under something. Now your answers was right, Mike. Your answers was right. His answers was not wrong. But I want another term used in Hebrews 8. I gave you the clue. Uh, Solomon. For we are not under the law, meaning what? Where's the mic? No one can hear you. Not under the first covenant, we're under the second covenant. Right, we're not under the first covenant or the old covenant, but under the new covenant, like it says in Hebrews 8. That's what Paul is addressing here. You get these idiot Christians, y'all let a Christian run rings around you with that. Read that Bible precept again, I thought. Well, you are not under the law, but under grace. A Christian will hit you in the head with that and say, see, we can eat pork chops. Okay, women can wear pants. See that? We can commit adultery. We can be homosexuals. It don't matter. And you don't know what you stun, you stuttering. Because you have not sat down and studied or applied yourself. From there, we're going to read a list of the top 10 drugs and their effects. Now, who knows? Some of you in here, some of you online may be very familiar with some of these top 10 drugs. <laughs> Number 10, heroin, okay? It says heroin is an opiate processed directly from the extracts of the opium poppy. That's a plant, okay? That's, that's all I can see, so we're gonna go to the next one. Number nine, cocaine. Some of y'all might be very familiar with that. Cocaine is a crystalline tropane alkaloid that is obtained from the leaves of the cocoa plant. That's what I wanted. Obtained from the leaves of the cocoa plant. There's a reason why I want this. Go ahead. Number eight is methamphetamine. Methamphetamine. Meth or crystal meth. Go ahead. Methamphetamine, popularly shortened to meth or ice, is a psychostimulant. Methamphetamine enters the brain and triggers a cascading release of norepine. Right. Whatever that means. Go to the next one. I'm tired of these words. Here's another familiar one in the black and Latino community. Crack, crack cocaine. <laughs> Go ahead. Crack cocaine, often nicknamed, nicknamed crack, is believed to have been created and made popular during the early 1980s. Okay, that's all we want. Go to the next one. Now remember, where did it say cocaine came from? Cocoa, Cocoa leaves. Plant. Number six. LSD. Lysergic acid diet. Thiamide, LSD, LSD slash 25 or acid, is a semi-synthetic psychedelic drug of the tryptamine family. Arguably the most regarded of all psychedelics, it is considered mainly as a recreational drug, an ethiogen, and a tool in use to supplement various types of exercises for transcendence, including meditation. Ah, oh, that's it. Go to number five now. Ecstasy. Ecstasy. MDMA is a semi-synthetic psychedelic impactogen of the fine, thank you, fine whatever, family. Now you women that like to go out, this is one of the drugs that people drop in your drink. It gets you all aroused and horny, then you want to get one that you raped by the end of the night and you want to know how you, anyway, go to the next one. <laughs> Okay, opium. Read that one. That, you see the plant there, right? Go ahead. Opium is a resinous narcotic form from the latex released by the lacerating or scoring the immature seed pods of the opium poppies. Okay, that's one. Now number three. Let's go to that one. Marijuana. Some of y'all are very familiar with that one. Mm hmm Cannabis, known as... Stop licking your lips. Go ahead. <laughs> Cannabis, known as marijuana... 
in its herbal form is a psychoactive product of the plant cannabis sativa. Humans have been consuming cannabis since prehistory, although the 20th century there was a rise in its use for recreational, religious, or spiritual and medicinal purposes. You see that? Recreational, religious, what was the other word? Spiritual. 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 We're going to touch on that later. Let's go to number two. I know what that. That's a mushroom. How you say that? Shrooms. 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 That's a mushroom. Right after Earth. Read that one up. Psilocybin mushrooms, also called psilocybin mushrooms, are fungi that contain the psychedelic substances psilocybin in sisilcin and occasionally other psychoactive tri pet. Wow. Oh, go to the next one, number one. PCP. Angel dust. Angel dust. PCP. Fencyclidine is a dissociative drug formerly used as an anesthetic agent Sherman. exhibiting hallucinogenic and neuro neurotoxic effects. It's commonly known as angel dust, okay. but it's also known as wet. Sherm, Sherman, Hensley, Rocket Fuel. <laughs> so now, now let's get, now there's one more, uh, get a line. Give me the next page that we pulled up. Now we, we're going all over this for a reason. Because some of y'all are addicted to certain things and you like to keep it secret on the down low. You and brothers and sisters online too. Okay, can we, we can't, can we read that for us? Uh, I can't even see it. It says uh, weed names, type of marijuana. These are the various types of marijuana. Just name some of them things. Okay, you we, ain't gotta read all of them. All right. Alcohol, poco, gold. Read the ones you can pronounce. All right. All right. <laughs> Jack Flash, Jack Frost, Jack's Cleaner, Juicy Fruit, KO Kush, Killer Crip Kush, <laughs> Killer Chim Dog. Jump uh, down to the P section. Jump down to the P. There was something in the P section that had me laugh. <laughs> Permafrost, Perplex, Phoenix, Sun, Pineapple, Express, Plum, Potter's Punch, Pure Gold, Purple Urkel, Purple A's, Purple Kush, Purple Monkey, <laughs> Purple Monkey Balls, Purple Nicole. <laughs> you hear Purple Monkey Balls? What the hell is this? That was it, Sean. That was it. There's got on names for all kinds of stuff. There's different kind of, there's levels of devils. I'm telling y'all, there's levels of devils. Now, wait a minute now. Now, what we just read there, all of those names that were easily, they are easier, easily pronounced. We were able to say all of that stuff. But all of that stuff that we were reading about just then came from all of those other drugs that we just saw. And a Negro can't pronounce half that stuff. Exactly. But yet he's ingesting and taking that stuff into his body. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go to watch this. Go to... Galatians 5, 19. I just want that one word there. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which, excuse me, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. Y'all see that word witchcraft there? In the Greek, the word there is uh, pharmakia. Right. Which comes, which is the word we use, pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. Okay, pharmaceuticals. All that we read today touches on these things. Many of us, not many of us. Well, I'll just say us, so nobody feels pointed out. Some of you sis, I know sisters like to take Xanax. What's that other thing? Um, Xanax and Ambien. what? 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 Ambien. Xylocodone, oxycodone, that all them things is forms, right, Perkinson. That's why there's a, a, a rash of robberies in Brooklyn alone just on the pharmaceutical stores getting robbed because they've, this Esau has let Jake know about the new kinds of high they can get. So they're breaking into stores, robbing pharmaceuticals. So now, that word there, witchcraft, because in the ancient times, many of the spells and things was used with herbs. herbs. Like we read about opiums, the cocoa leaves and all that. Yep. Uh, the tribe of Gad used, what's that used to smoke? Peace plant, the peace peyote. Pipe, peace pipe. Peyote. 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 All that puts you in a hallucinogenic state. Okay? And it opens up, the, it does open up the spirit world. But guess what? It is not of the Most High. It's of Satan. So when you delve into that, you're dealing in witchcraft. When you want that high. Some of these we these marijuana things like us talking with Officer Malachi, yeah? how they some of them they spray with rope spray and other chemicals. It gives you a different high. 
Some of these things will trap your mind. There was a young man here whose mind was caught like that. Snapped, his whole mind snapped. Why? Demons. The door was open to a gateway of demons. Okay, give me that in uh, Psalms 104.19, I thought. So don't play with these drugs. Do not play. You say, well, my friend Tyrone took it. Ain't nothing happened to him. Well, guess what? It didn't happen to Tyrone yet. You might not be, your mind might not be like Tyrone's. You take one, you ever notice somebody take it one time, they go. But the next, I give an example. Back in, long time ago, long, long time ago. Long time ago. Be around in school, everyone's smoking weed. I say, let me get some of that. I'm smoking weed, they're smoking, everybody passing it around. Everybody giggling. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, I ain't giggling. I don't get it. Why is everybody laughing? There's something wrong. They know there's something wrong with you. It didn't affect me. But that was me. It didn't, I had no, if other brothers smoking once, they hooked. Cannot get off that stuff. Other brothers smoking hundreds and hundreds of times and they gave it up. But this is nothing. Mm -hmm. Other brothers, one dry it is they finished. Mm -hmm. Their life is over. I've, I've, I've known people that take a hit or something and died the very, very first time. Yeah. Yeah. Got it from somebody who's been doing it for, for months and almost years. And they pay, hey man, pass me some of that. He took it, boom, gone. Dead. So everybody is not the same. That's right. Everybody is not the same. All right, Tom, what you got for me? Um, Psalms 104. And what verse? What verse 14. Yeah. Or is it 19? 19. 14? 14. Okay, go ahead. Psalms 104, verse 14. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle, and herb for the service of man. When the Bible says herbs for the service of man, it's talking in terms of medicine. Medicine. All them things we was reading about, them herbs and all that, those different leaves and uh, plants, herbs for medicines. That's it. When you get into the smoking it and all of that, you are putting your mind, I'm gonna say it that way, you're putting your mind in jeopardy. You gonna kill, I talked to one brother, he talked about, no, I don't, I, remember what Whitney Houston said, she, she was, they said, do you use crack? She said, I make too, money, too much money for crack. Oh. Then he got a brother, now, cocaine is very expensive on the street. Here go a Negro smoking crack, uh, cocaine in a marijuana stick, come on. I don't do crack, I just do cocaine and weed. That's a brother, you do crack, stop, it's crack. You gonna smoke the wrong spliff one day, or doobie, whatever names they got, doobie, spliff, all the little funky names they got, y'all, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You gonna get your mind trapped up and sealed. Talking about, I'm, I'm cuckoo for Cocoa Pops, here you are. And we can't help you then, all the anointing in the world ain't gonna be able to help you. And you know what? We could hit you with a whole bottle of olive oil. They ain't gonna help. Exactly. You know what? I, I, I think about it sometimes too, because a lot of times people, especially in the in the quote unquote minority neighborhoods, they rename these drugs to make it sound like it's less harmful. Because if you was to, if somebody was to sell you something that had the names like what we were reading before, you might think twice about it with the names that you couldn't pronounce. But by them turning it into purple haze, you say, oh, okay, it's just or a haze. purple monkey ball. Or purple, you know, you, you, you kind of you, you you uh, bring down the seriousness of what it's about. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Yes, sir. They try to make it sound innocuous by giving it these other names. But in the truth, they're, they're still going to kill you behind. Right, and um, a lot of people also got hit by cars, run over by smoking uh, marijuana because you know, you got, you got a thing out there in the world where you call, um, you know, a lot of people say they see a green man. You know, I don't know if you want, any one of you all ever hear about that. You understand? People that smoke weed, they see, they see a green man and they run in the street and they get run over. You understand? So, yo, don't try it if you never did. You know, as the others say, as brothers say, it ain't going to give the same effect on you. Some brothers, they're going to smoke it and they're going to they gonna hallucinate. Start seeing things. You in the spirit world now. You see a green man chasing you. I know a couple. I know about a couple people that run out in the street and got run over by cars because they see somebody chasing them. They see a green man chasing them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So be now, I, I, I know the depths of a Negro. He he would do it. He, I want to see that green man. You understand? Know I people are sick, man. I know the heat gonna get turned up a little more. Come oh yeah. The um. 
And one of the signs is when you uh, smoke a lot of these things, there's a paranoid effect on you. You think everyone is after you. Oh, we know we forgot bath salts is the new one. That yeah. new, took your money, start eating people's faces. Bath salts give you that superhuman strength too. And you want to you want to be a cannibal? Turn into a damn cannibal. Okay, you find it like that? Yeah, where is it? Acts 13. Yeah, is that it? Okay, get, just get to the point. Get, go to Acts 13. I'm looking for this. If this is the scripture, I want the one in Acts where it said that a certain dude had a spell on everybody. Oh, okay. It said he had a spell on the people. First, find that one for me. Find me that one. You sit there, you got somebody with you in, in the house, and they, they have a paranoid, they're nervous, their eyes are shifty, they think everyone's after them. They had one guy in the news not too long ago, he was an MMA fighter, he ripped his roommate's heart out of his chest because he was on bath salts. Y'all see that? Ripped his roommate's heart out, he was on bath salts. You can't play with these drugs, and no matter even if it's your loved one, the best thing to do is get them put away. Meaning, after the prayers and all that, we can do that. We want to do that. But if that spirit don't want to change, or the demon is that whole strong on them, and the most high, it's up to the most how to release that mind. If it ain't being released, for your safety, for your safety, because you don't want to wake up in the middle of the night and a Negro standing over you with a knife talking about, you look like my PO officer. <laughs> How is this? There's many cases like that. Many, many cases. One day I'm going to bring some of them things and I'll read to y'all. You're going to be surprised. Acts 8 verse 9. Acts 8 verse 9. Let's go there. Acts 8 verse 9. Acts 8 verse 9. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria. Y'all see that? He used sorcery. All those forms of sorcery goes also into pharmaceuticals. To bewitch the people. Okay, it's all witchcraft. Forms and levels of witchcraft. You got low levels, that's what Negroes is on that low level. You got the Rastas on another one, talking about, ah, I see Jaman. No, you see the devil. That's what you see. <laughs> see this air open up with a dude with horns. The white man, he talking about Ja, and the white man come through with dirty dreadlock, dirty blonde dreadlock, talking about he Jesus. And a dumb Rasta talking about, I see Ja. You see the devil, that's what you see. From there, give me that next one in Sirach 38 and 4. <laughs> Keep playing with these pharmaceuticals, these drugs that Esau got out here. Esau taking them from the plants and making them, putting them on levels of you have no idea. Talk about, yeah, Gad was very spiritual. Yeah, they was. They had the devil on them too. <laughs> Sirach 38 verse 4. The Lord hath created medicines out of the earth. Y'all see that? The Lord hath created medicines out of the earth. You will not find the scripture where it says, and the Lord created smoke from these things out of the earth. The Lord never did that. Never did that thing. It was always for medicinal purposes, for the healing of the body, of the mind. That was it. Never smoking. Right? Never smoking. When you start smoking it, you're going so you're going, you're delving into witchcraft. That's what you're doing, because it's going to open your mind to another level of satanic forces. Oh, hold up. Some, some brothers might say that they got, um, what do you call that, a license? or um, medicinal. The, medicinal. Medicinal. They went to the doctor and they got, they got some where the doctor said they could smoke it. It's good for their eyes. They got glaucoma. Oh, come oh, on. You right. know, because brothers get that. You right, know, right, in right, California, right. you could go and you could get, um, get a license saying you could smoke marijuana for medicinal purposes. All right. Even though if you do that, you're gonna still put spirits on you. You still, right. you're still going into that spirit realm when you smoke it. All right. So I, I, brothers that got that, that might have that um, license on doing that, and they say, well, we are breaking the laws of the land, so ain't no sin. Listen, you put in spirits on you on yourself. All right. Because my one, when you smoke it, it get you paranoid. You understand? Now you wonder why Negroes always fighting each other. You know, you walking on the street, dude. Yo, why are you looking at me like that? You know, dudes are always fighting each other. Why? Because all that weed or people be smoking. All that drugs. I hope y'all understand that. Go to the next one, Sirach. Did you read Sirach 38 and 4? Yeah. Read it again. The whole thing. Sirach 38 verse 4. The Lord hath created medicines out of the earth, 
And he that is wise will not abhor them. He that is wise will not hate them, meaning in terms of medicine. Okay, go real quick. Let's go to, let's, so we dealt, that's drugs and weed, the different levels. Let's go to the next thing that many of our people are bound with, the sex addiction. You're like, that's nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. Oh, I thought I got something for herbs. Wisdom of Solomon 16 and 12. Add this one to it. This shows how it was used. This shows how it was used. The herbs. Wisdom of Solomon 16 verse 12. For it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health. But thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things. Mm, that's a good one. Y'all see that? So when Israel was getting bitten by the poisonous snakes, the wisdom of Solomon reveals that herbs isn't what healed Israel. Neither was it the plaster, which goes into other forms of medicine. But it was the word of God that healed them. That's the ultimate. So when you are bound and addicted with something, the first thing we must do, give me that in um, Kings, when the Most High uh, jacked up a certain king for going to the physicians first. King Asa, get me that. Get me that. Second Chronicles 16, verse 12. And Asa, in the 39th year of his reign, was diseased in his feet. So King Asa was diseased in his feet. Come on. Until his disease was exceeding great. Yet in his disease, he sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians. Y'all see that? And when you read on, the Mosai got angry with him for that. Because he went to the physicians first before he went to the Lord. He didn't want to pray and fast regarding it and deal with the word of God. He went to the physician first and the Most High had him die. Everybody understand that? Because the word of the Most High is the ultimate cure. I want you to highlight that one you just read in Wisdom of Psalm 16 and 12 about the health of Israel. Came not through, um, what did it say? Herbs. Not through herbs and mollifying plaster, but the cure came from the word of God. That's where the cure is. So we can tell brothers when you get addicted to these things like go to rehab and all that, you on methamphetamine. But guess what? When, they, when you go to these methadone clinics, mm -hmm. they substitute, or cocaine, they substitute, substitute one drug for, for another. another drug, yep. for a lesser drug. And those lesser drugs have side effects too. Yep. It affects your, your teeth start to fall out. Yep. You ever see them people in the Bronx? Yep. And they, they, they ain't just in the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't lower man. I see them a lot. You got their sleep, like they, they never hit the ground. Nope. They just like a zombie, they just leaning. Yep. They got the perfect balance. They never hit, I'm like, away from the fall. They yep. never fall. Nope. Never. Get right back up. Yes, Abiyah. No one can hear you. It also affects your speech. You're right. Instead of talking normal, you stop talking like this, puppy. You know, let me get a car. Yes, right. You heard that? That's the truth. It affects everything. Affects everything. <laughs> now you might think, well, my only demon I got is nicotine. Y'all ain't see some of them commercials they got with the lady with no fingers? Oh, yeah. I, I'm half my outside of my kid. Look at that thing. Don't you ever follow that and want to smoke cigarettes? Fingers all chopped off. Twenty something amputations. She said she just yeah. smacked her hand and, and it's not gonna fall off. Yeah. Right you, you ever see the dude with the voice? I used to love swimming in Puerto Rico. I can't swim no more. What the hell? All jacked up over nicotine, smoking cigarettes. Bro, it is it's real sad, but some of us in here right now looking up here at us secretly go home and delve in one of them things. Smoke. Smoke whether it's cigarettes, weed, uh, some type of drug. And you keep it quiet. The brothers online too, brothers and sisters online. Right now, some of them keep it quiet. Yes, love. Yeah, uh, all these drugs are spirit, man. You're dealing with, you're dealing with the spiritual world. That everything in this world is spiritual. You understand? When you picking these cigarette or drugs, you put in, you put in spirit upon you. Regardless what kind of form of spirit, this spirit will affect you in life. They will affect you in life. That's why you have to be serious the thing that you deal out here. You understand? That's why the brother been in the scriptures, most I telling you that is his words that will heal us. You understand? And we have to start believing that. One of the things that we have to uh, also examine 
when you talk about this whole thing about drugs, and one of the parts is about alcohol, which is uh, you're going to come to, right? Mm -hmm. Part of it. And even the uh, sex thing, prom promiscuity. All of these things are some, if you will, amplified in our communities. Mm -hmm. You got to ask yourself, why is it so easy for you to get a crack pipe? Why is it so easy for you to get... It's, it, you can get all of these, any kind of, all those drugs that we saw up on the screen, you can get that stuff within 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Right where we're sitting at. You can go outside and make some kind of connection, and within 15 minutes you can have anything that you saw up on that screen. Think about that. That's because you're being supplied with these things to fulfill a quote-unquote need. Yep. And you know what the need is? Your self-esteem is so low that you look to these these um, these hallucinatory drugs to temporarily take you out of your pain, painkillers, which is going to eventually kill you. Okay, until we really deal with the real pain that's within us, you're going to always look for these kinds of cheap escapes. Okay, it's really a sickness. That's why I'm sitting here quiet. It's really a sickness. This is not anything. I hear some of us laughing. This is not a laughing matter at all. This is really something that's going to literally destroy the hell out of us. Okay, go ahead. From there, let's go to Ecclesiasticus. Let's deal with sex. Ecclesiasticus 23, and let's start at verse 17. Okay? So, some of us in here have been, have allowed sin to rule in our mortal bodies. We have allowed sin to dominate, have dominion over us in the form of drug use. Okay. Yeah, good. And in addition to uh, what I was saying earlier, you could get, when you start, once you get hooked up into that system of of, of drugs, and then you have to go to uh, rehabs and and doctors and all kinds of things, you enter into a whole another system of Satan. Mm -hmm. Okay, I heard the elder mention the point that they give you one drug to cure you off of another drug. And you're into the cycle. And once your name hits, once once you get into that thing, you're a product. Okay, you become an experiment. It's a, it's a very nasty, ugly system. Okay, so my point is, stay away from it. Forget about the green man and all that mess. Leave that garbage alone. Okay, if you want to live, stay away from that mess. Exactly. Ecclesiastes 23, 17. 17. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. The Bible says all bread is sweet to a whoremonger. What's a whoremonger, uh, Elio? What's a whoremonger? <laughs> a whoremonger is a man that loves whores. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll go with that. Uh, somebody that likes that he has sex with a multitude of women and without marriage. I understand that just sex and responsibility, bounce from wham bam, thank you, ma'am. But he don't love them hoes. Yeah, he don't love them hoes. <laughs> yeah, uh, a whole mongrel. When he's saying that uh, sweet to him, he don't care the sister might be a midget. He will assist him at the end because he's a whole mongrel. Half, uh, half arm, half. He will go through it because he's a homo. He exactly. will sleep with everything that moves. Exactly. You understand? He don't care what you look. When it says all bread is sweet, it means all types of women. He yeah. he don't care what she look like. He don't care. Bro, that woman got a beard. I don't care. What the hell is this? <laughs> I like the woman with a little hair. Yeah, okay. Read that again like that. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. He will not leave off till he dies. He won't stop that sin till he dies. He's a, and you got some women who think they can change a whoremonger brother. She, and how do you spot a whoremonger brother? How do you, spot, how do you know a whoremonger brother? That's right. You can help us. Help me out. Pass as a writer, man. How do you spot? Let's help the sisters out. How do you spot a brother who has a whoremonger spirit? Um, a whoremonger spirit on a brother when he approaches his sister, he's not looking in her face. So he's looking down at her body. Right, he's looking at the body. He's licking his lips. You know what LL be doing? 
We're gonna be all looking at Al Al. He ain't looking you in your eyes. He looking right down at the goods. Mm -hmm. Licking them lips. And when he talking to you, he see the next butt bot go by, he like this. He even trying to hide it. He ain't doing this. He doing this. You still talking to him. He look, oh damn, girl. You still the girl, sister still in the middle of her sentence. She ain't finished the thought. He look, damn, girl, come here. And she's that, she's that simple. She think her stuff is that good. She thinks she got a, a cape with an S on it coming out of her stuff. My stuff is powerful. I'll change him. Yeah, right. You sisters like that, you simple as hell. You might keep that man at home maybe a month, maybe in two months. But after a while, when he gets tired of steak and potatoes every night, the antennas is going to go up. Ding, 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 ding. And he looking out the window. He on the TV. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And they got a new website. Y'all see on the TV? Meetblackpeople.com. Y'all yep. see that stupidity? I said, now what kind of brothers or sisters you going to meet on that? You going to meet that? Remember that movie? Uh, uh, Coming to America, when they go to the restaurant to meet women, oh man, all the wild bugs that women up. <laughs> One woman lighting her hand on fire. I was Joan of Arc in the past. That was this. Meet all kind of crazy folks up in there. Twins, rapping, right, the, the rapping twins up there. So the Bible says all bread is sweet to a whoremonger. He don't care what she look like. He want her. Read that again, I thought. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. He will not leave off till he dies. The only thing that can stop him, sister, is death. That's it. Go ahead. A man that breaketh wedlock, saying thus in his heart, Who seeth me? I am compassed about with darkness. The walls cover me, and nobody seeth me. What need I to fear? The Most High will not remember my sins. So this brother don't fear God. He don't fear God at all. Go ahead. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men. He only fears man. He only fears being caught by the husband. No, or by, not that the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. You know what that means? The most I always puts in that, that either boyfriend or husband's mind, because ain't no boy supposed to be husband. You left something back at home. <laughs> I left my keys. Mm -hmm. He go right back to the house, open the door, he quiet. He says, I smell Badussi. <laughs> you know that funk smell when you're doing something? It's that funky smell. <laughs> and he goes up there and he, <laughs> the hell is then shots fired. That's what you hear, shots fired. Read <laughs> 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 that again like that. <laughs> Such a man only feareth the eyes of men, and knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are ten thousand times brighter than the sun. The Lord sees everything. Go ahead. Beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret parts. The most high sees even the secret things we do. He sees it. Go ahead. He knew all things or ever they were created. So also after they were perfected, he looked upon them all. Come on. This man shall be punished in the streets of the city. Y'all see that? This man, this whoremonger brother, shall be punished in the streets of the... And don't think Israelites with fringes and a border of blues, not whoremongers. You better believe they are. You better believe... Some of them working on wife number five. Yo, girl, yo, girl, you should be my fifth rib. Really? She's so simple and stupid as she is. Really? She up in a house with five other women cramped in a one-bedroom apartment. Are you kidding me? How dumb are you? Give me that one. Give me the stupid woman. Scripture in 1 Timothy. I like that. That's one of my favorite scriptures. 2 Timothy 3 verse 6. For this sort are they which creep into houses. Now the ones that creep into houses is the brothers with the Bible. The men with the scriptures are those, because he's talking about the scribes and the Pharisees. The, how they creep in the houses with the guise of being a holy man, being a man of the Lord. Oh yes, brother, teach me the scriptures. Go ahead. And lead captive silly women, laden with sin. See that? And lead captive silly women. The woman knows she's bound with sin. She's coming to the brother with the Bible for spiritual counsel. Brother, I need help. Then the brother says, I'll meet you by your house. The red flag should go up. Ding, 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 ding. Mistake number one. We tell a brother. Brother says, oh, I met a sister. I told some of y'all this story before. He said, brother, I met this sister. She want me to teach her the scripture. We said, brother, why don't you bring her to the school? No, nah, bro, I got this. Bro, don't go to the house. Bro, I got this. <laughs> brother, why do you need, find the need to go to her house to teach her the scriptures? Bring her to the school. We're trying to help her. Brother, I got this. I got you. <laughs> Next Sabbath come. Brother got here, got his head down. There's always, there's always signs when the brother's in the midst of sin. 
You know, he coming up in the spirit of the Lord. Yo, bro, yo, shalom. This week, he's like, hey, shalom. <laughs> Something wrong, bro. What happened? What happened to the woman? You know, bro, you know, yeah. I went to the woman's house. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, she came to the door and, you know, she was wearing a. Well, she had on a dress, French board. No, no, no. She had on a. What's the word? A nightie. She had a nightie on. It's kind of see through. You know, I, I, and we went in, I was showing her the scriptures, and I, I, she laid on the bed, I sat on the bed to show the I said, you sat on the bed to show her the scriptures? I said, then what happened? Well, somehow the Bible got under the bed, and I'll, I'll end that story there. But that happened. It, there you go, baby. All kind of wickedness going on. All kind of wickedness. That's why if you notice when Christ taught, he would say what to the woman that he was talking to? Bring your husband. Woman, bring your husband. You, that whoremonger brother ain't gonna do that. Then again, he might just to see if you got one. So you gotta be aware of that. Where you at, like, son? Second Timothy, no, we read that. Go back to Ecclesiastes 23. Verse uh, 20. Here there'd be no. another, there'd be another brother, 21. like you were saying. There'd be another brother who could teach another sister. Who teach a sister, then he would win a six pack. Talking about he gonna teach her, then drink beer lit. And go to the house wearing a tight shirt. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> With muscles. Yeah, sister, I'm teaching you this. You ain't fooling nobody, bro. And you can see it on Facebook too. Look at the brother, all his friends is women. So oh, that's brothers a homeowner right there. Yep. Ain't no brothers up there, maybe one or two to try to throw you off. But the rest of the 59 is women. Yeah, you ain't fooling nobody this way. And every week he got a new picture showing new muscles. <laughs> Verse 21. <laughs> this man shall be punished in the streets of the city. The way he suspecteth not, he shall be taken. Come on. Thus shall it go also with the wife that leaveth her husband and bring it in an air by another. Because women sometimes get that spirit of whoremonger too. When you hear, you spot them, I don't want no man. When you hear a woman say that, red flags. I don't want no man. Hmm. Meaning she don't want no man to rule or guide her. She don't want that at all. She want to bounce from rod to rod, man to man. That's how she get down. Read that again. Thus shall it go also with the wife that leaveth her husband and bringeth in an heir by another. And bringeth in an heir by another. She gonna bring in a child. Now me and my wife dark skin. Imagine she come in with a real light skin baby. But who baby that? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I look like I'm burnt in the furnace. She looks like she burnt in the furnace. Come with a real high yellow baby. But wait a minute. <laughs> and don't give me that generation skip thing. I see everybody in my family burnt in the furnace too. In your family too. The hell is this? <laughs> Eyes be hazel on the <laughs> Women try to be slick. It's your baby. Read that again. <laughs> this man shall be. I'm sorry. Verse 22. Thus shall it go also with the wife that leaveth her husband and bringeth in an heir by another. Come on. For first she hath disobeyed the law of the Most High, and secondly she hath trespassed against her own husband, mm. and thirdly she hath played the whore in adultery and brought children by another man. Y'all see that? Y'all see this on Maury Povich all the time. Maury is his baby. Look, see them eyes he got? My baby got big eyes just like that. See his teeth? got big teeth, baby. Yeah. What the hell is this? Didn't we? You are not the baby dad. Ah, she cried. Ah. The white man got to run out there and console her. Mm -hmm. And the dude laughing. Ah. Yeah. And so I'll come back on the show. I'm trying to get her to come back. Jumping up and down like he won the lottery. Yeah, like he won the lottery. I know he happy. Come back and get hooked up with that sister. She on there cursing him out. She putting her finger in his head. Hitting him. One dude, I, one time he made a knot cake. <laughs> what? He wasn't the he wasn't the father. He made, he made her a knot cake. as a not the father. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Happens all the time. And they said Negroes made Maury Povich rich. Yep. Because of the illicit behavior that our people are in. Yeah. And he's been running them same shows for years. For years. Right. Yeah. He got plenty, plenty, yeah. plenty of material. Almost our people for his show to keep running. Exactly. It's like every day we run that same yep. show. Yep. yep. Every day, the same scenario. Where you at, I thought? Was that it? Yeah. We're finished. 
She shall be brought out into the congregation, and inquisition shall be made of her children. So, sisters, you see that? She shall be brought out in the midst of the congregation. <laughs> so, these things are going to happen. As Israel start to come together, these laws are going to be applied. Go ahead. Verse 25? Yeah. Verse 25. Her children shall not take root, and her branches shall bring forth no fruit. Because, now, this reason this would happen was because once she was identified and that, that the baby was a child of adultery, in our past, what this is touching on is that nobody would allow their son or daughter to marry that child. It would, it would be a bastard child. Okay, there's one incident of that in the book of Judges. Well, I think the guy, yeah. brother's name was Jephthah, right? Yeah. He was one of these. But the Most High used him because he was a brother of sincerity and loved the Most High. The word of the Most High is the only thing that can clear up the problems in our nation. Where you at, I thought? Verse 26. Come on. She shall leave her memory to be cursed. She shall leave her memory to be cursed. On her tombstone, here lies dead hope. <laughs> Good. And her reproach shall not be blotted out. And her reproach shall not be blotted. Can you imagine that that's your mama? Jan showed me this video. Uh, what was the name of that, that movie? Meet the Browns. They sit at the table. What about my mom? My daddy has some good. Your daddy was a pimp. What about them nice women that to come by and take care of me? Holes. What about the freckle hole? The, the freckle woman. She was a freckled hole. What about the Spanish lady that would make cakes for us? She was a Latin hole. What about our mama? We had a good mama. Nasty hole. <laughs> ah! Oh man, them things funny as hell. Crazy. The way our people live is amazing. And the nations mock us when they look at us and see the things we go through. You finished that, I thought? Yeah. From there. Go to new levels, new devils. You brothers coming up in the spirit, be get yourselves ready to be tried. Matthew 5, verse 27. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Now we've all heard that law in Exodus 20. Moses taught us that thou shalt not commit adultery. Go ahead. But I say unto you, but I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, have committed adultery with her already in his heart. Now you get some brothers that get simple. Because when you see a woman that's good looking, there's a, there's, a, there's a difference between a woman you look at, you say, oh, she look good, and you want to make her what? Your wife. And a brother that looks at a sister and goes, mm, she look good. And he don't want her as a wife. That's different. Which one is Christ talking about? The one that don't want to make her the wife. Read it again, I thought. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. You see that? That's adultery. You want her for sex. You don't want her for a wife. Now there's levels on that. That verse right there. Because some brothers is addicted to what? Pornography. And guess what? You might, I remember there was a brother who used to say to me, Bro, it's better that I look at this than go out and actually do that. So I said, mm, you can yeah, kind of, but that's going to open the door to something else. I said, I told him, I don't know who he is, I ain't going to call his name. But those, pornography will open the door to, because after you're looking at it, looking at it, what do you want to do? You want to do it. After a while, you get tired of lotion. <laughs> it's like, you know what? I'm getting tired of this thing. I want the real stuff. That's what's going to happen. That's why. Read it again. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. It's going to lead to adultery. Now, I'm going to show the level with that. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 6. Because after watching years and years of this stuff, it's going to lead you to, just like I said, 1 Corinthians 6 and 15. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 15. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? Shall we deal with harlots? That's what Paul is asking the Corinthians. Is it justice, justifiable, or lawful to deal with harlots, with hoes? And there's different levels of hope. I know some brothers try to be slick. You say, I don't deal with a hoe. The woman that, you know, you got the high price hoe that's standing on the corner that look real, real nice. Then you got your ghetto hood hoe. She might have three teeth missing. All you need to give her is a happy meal. And she's good. But a hoe is a hoe. She's a harlot. That's the root of it. A harlot. Read it again. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? 
God forbid. The answer is no. We are forbidden to deal with harlots. Go ahead. What? No, you and you know that woman you having sex with is not your wife. You know she's a hoe. I'm closing my eyes so nobody feel like I'm talking about them. After class, I'm gonna get a, you was talking about me, brother. Maybe we were. Yeah, we The been. spirit might be, so I'm just gonna point and close my eyes. You! <laughs> that again, I what? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two saith he shall be one flesh. So you have made, you have joined your flesh, your body, your mind has become one with her mind. She's a hoe, she's not about the most high, she hates the Lord, and you have joined your soul with hers. That's what it's saying, you've become one. Was that it? Uh, We're going down to 18. Uh, 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Uh -huh. Flee fornication. Letting you know that it's all spiritual. Go ahead. Every sin that I've It said what? Read that again? Flee fornication. So what is it calling having sex with a harlot? What's that word is saying? Fornication. 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 <laughs> and some of you brothers, give me this, find me the scripture about he that does not have a wife. Give me that one. The one that says mourns. I want all you single brothers, single men, pay attention. Sirach 36 verse 25. Where no hedges, there the possession is spoiled. Okay. So where no hedge, was that it? Yes, sir. Where no hedges, there the possession is spoiled. So a woman without a hedge, a woman with no man that's guiding her says the possession is spoiled. That's why we read in, what was the second Timothy we read earlier about the silly woman? Yep. She had no hedge. She's silly. There's no man to say what's right and what's wrong. She's caught up in the midst of iniquity. Read it again. With no hedges, there the possession is spoiled. She is easily to become spoiled. Why? Because she wants a husband. She's easily deceived. You see a lot of them on Facebook, YouTube. Single women are easy to deceive. Because what? They want a husband. They want to try to do right. But they always meet that thug lover brother who can type good. I say type good. And say all the right words. And she want to, okay, we can meet. Then after he hit it, he gone. Or if you got something like an apartment or a car, or you might have some money that, he, cause he might, chances are he got nothing. He looking for the woman who got a little something he can, he can leech off of her. Mooch. Mooch. Benefits. Benefits. Yeah, I'm gonna get that woman right there. He gonna tell that sister all the right things. And she's that simple, she can't understand that she's being used and abused. Okay, read that again. With no hedges, the possession is spoiled. That goes for you women. Go ahead. Now watch this for the brother. And he that have no wife. And he that hath no wife. Will wander up and down mourning. Will wander up and down mourning. Because the Most High said about men, it is not good that man should what? Be alone. Be alone. Now unless you're a eunuch, that's why Christ said, give me that Matthew 19 about the man that has no wife. Verse 10. We're going to start at Matthew 19 and 10. The point is verse 12, I think, right? Yeah. Go ahead. Matthew 19, verse 10. His disciples say unto him, if the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. So Peter and them said, if the case be so with the man and his wife, it's good not to marry. What? Meaning you can only put her away for fornication. If she doesn't commit fornication, you cannot put her away. So Peter and them was said that the 12 apostles said, if that's true, which it is, then it's good not to marry. Look what Christ came back and said. But he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying. All men cannot receive this saying. Go ahead. Save they to whom it is given. Only to the elect. That's who it's given to. Go ahead. But there are some eunuchs. Now he goes into the eunuchs. There are some eunuchs. What? Which, um, so there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb. Meaning they're born a eunuch from their mother's womb. You had two kinds. You had the main kind. Well, read the whole thing. Let me hear it first. The whole thing. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. Uh huh. And there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. Read the whole verse again. But there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's you womb. You had some brothers born eunuchs. Meaning what? There was something wrong with the genitalia down there. The plumbing did not operate. That's the kind that was born from their mother's womb. Go ahead. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. You had eunuchs made eunuchs of men. That's when, like during Babylon, when they would cut the penis off. And they would put you over the harem of women. Like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were under the prince of the eunuchs. Why? Because they were made eunuchs. Go ahead. And there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. Those are eunuchs that decided for themselves not to deal with women. 
Paul. You had Paul was like that. Christ was like that. John the Baptist was like that. They were from the from the womb. They they were chosen not to deal with women. Well, Paul, it doesn't go on his early life, so I really can't say about Paul, but when he repented, that was the decision he did make. Okay? Is that it? He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. All right. Now, from there, let's go to Hebrews 13 and 4. Hebrews 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. Marriage is honorable in all. The Most High is all about marriage. It's honorable in all things. It's honorable. Go ahead. And the bed under fire. And whatever you do, brothers and sisters, could we get questions about sex? Here's the answer. Read that part again. And the bed under fire. The bed is under fire. As long as there's no written law about it, like threesomes, there's a law on that. Who knows what the law is? I keep calling Elliot Dan. Where's the law about threesomes? Uh, that's Leviticus 18. Leviticus 18 and what verse? Who knows the verse? Get the verse. 18. 18, 18. Is that it? Okay, let's read it. Because some of y'all right and online. What? We can't have menage twice? I live for that thing. But it gets 18 verse 18. Now Some the, brothers are sweating right now. They got an attitude. But we bring it out. Go ahead. Neither shalt thou take a wife to her sister. Neither shall you take a wife to her sister. To vex her. To vex her. To uncover her nakedness. So take her clothes off. Beside the other. Beside the other. Be keyword beside the other. Go ahead. In her lifetime. So you are not to have two women in the bed with you. I hope you people online hear this, you freaks. No. <laughs> See, there's some people amongst us who would like to do that thing. Stop it. If you're guilty of it, stop it. Okay? Or they made a joke out of it on uh what is that scary movie, I think? One of the Wayne's brothers liked his girl to dress up like a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. I'm going to leave that one alone, brother. Read that again. Hebrews 13 and 4. Because the law says in Deuteronomy, what? 22 and 5. A woman shall not wear what pertains to a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. He want to dress like Dolly Carrington. And she want to dress like uh, a football, uh, football player. What the hell is this? So we spicing it up. No, no, you freak. No, you're not. Read that again. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed under fire. So now, anything outside of that, them laws that we do, like we touched on two basic ones, outside of that, what y'all do is fine. Don't have, You don't got to write me and ask me about fruit and vegetables. There's no law about that. I'll stay out of that. So if you like fruit and vegetables, how many of y'all saw the movie City of God? That was a good movie. There's a scene about bananas. Spicing it up. She used fruit. I'll leave it alone, buddy. Go ahead, everybody. But whoremongers and adulterers. <laughs> but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. How will God judge whoremongers and adulterers? Right here. Yeah. Yes. Also, every sickness, every sickness, and every plague, and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, which is not written in the book of this law, like AIDS is not written in the book of this law, herpes is not written in here, gonorrhea, syphilis, 25, 19, whatever, is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. You see that? Then will the Lord bring upon thee. Oh, and you brothers thought that, that pig skin latex condom was going to protect you. Hmm. You didn't realize what that woman had. You thought she, the sex was so good. He, the brother got the condom on. He's got, his mouth is open wide. She drooling. Her spit going in his mouth. He keeping it freaky. Guess what? You got hit. You got hit. Now you got the monster. And you said, but I wore a condom. There is a God. There is a God. And he will plague you. Plague you. So keep it up. The most, high not only, the most High not only judged us as individuals, he judged us as a nation. I was listening to that scripture um, about whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Because we've been, we've been, as a nation of people, we've been tied up in that kind of business for the longest. Mm -hmm. And guess how he judged us? We were just talking about it all, all this evening. Maury Povich. Mm -hmm. That's judgment. 
Yep. When you see all these unwed mothers and fathers that don't want to be with the kids and all that, all that is judgment from our wickedness that we've been doing. That's what all the, every sickness and, and, and wickedness that you see out here is the judgment of God upon this sinful nation. Yep. That's what this is. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah I got a scripture on that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ecclesiasticus. Five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Six. Verse 6 And say not his mercy is great no, no, verse, four, still verse 4 Say not I have sinned And what harm hath happened unto me For the Lord is long suffering He will no wise let thee go You see that's what Mosiah said Don't say that you're going to sin what happened to you Nothing happened to you The Bible says Mosiah will pay you Pay you back will pay you a visit Don't never say that I have sinned What harm has come to me that's what these scriptures brought it out. If you're guilty of that, repent. Mm -hmm. So now, the next thing that tends to monopolize the minds of Negroes and Latinos is alcohol. Alcohol. You ever notice in the ghetto, there's a wine, a liquor store in every other corner. That's not by accident, it's by design. Okay, just like on a, uh, Indian reservations. Same thing, it's always by design. Give me that. Go to First Ezra three and ten. Y'all, sorry, you gonna say something? Yeah. You heard what he just said? He said like, on every corner there's a liquor store, right? You can always find a, a liquor store here, a liquor store there. You find more of those than you do libraries. That's right. Anything that's that's set up for your benefit is is scarce. Mm -hmm. But anything that's designed to put you six feet under, it's all out there, right at your fingertips. That's why I said fifteen, 15 minutes we can go out and find any kind of drug on this earth. Okay, that's like being on every corner. The uh, the the pro the promiscuous advertisements is out there on your television. Every time you turn your TV on, every other channel is some booty flashing across the screen. All that's promoting uh, adultery, promiscuity. All of that stuff is being pushed to our people. Okay, and until we wake up, this is, we're gonna continue to go into it. Now, let me, I, I'm on the back to just for a second, because a lot of y'all meet men and women, and you, you think they look relatively healthy. You see, I, I'm going to give you a story. There's a brother, there's a brother at work, where I work at, he always, always in the gym, always, working out. Diesel brother, always. <laughs> working out, working out. So one day, I'm walking by, and I see him, I hear noise. You ever know how pill bottles sound when they got a lot of pills in it? I hear pill noise. Somebody's taking pills. So I look over and he's popping a couple of pills. I don't think nothing of it at first. Keep going. I'm thinking he's taking those, uh, steroid. those steroid things, whatever they, they call them. Next day, same thing. Next day, I see him he's doing the same thing. So one day, his bag is, and I'm nosy. I happen to walk by and I look down. And it's not those pills you get at GNC. I see a long, each pill bottle had a, a word, like the words we couldn't pronounce tonight. Same thing, and I'm looking at some of the ingredients, because he walked away. He said, mind my post, and I was, I'm sitting there next to his bag. And I said, what the hell, I'm looking. I see all these strange pills, and I said, no. And I, it, this was AIDS medication. AIDS medication. And by looking at the dude, you would never think he got that. So you sisters, don't be deceived. And brothers too, there's women like that too. They got it going on. They look healthy as hell, but they sick. That, you know what? That'll help you with the hormone, hormone spirit. Y'all stop, what's wrong with you? Like? Bro, you me can y'all hear me? Yeah, no, nobody can hear me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something yeah. Up on the head. Yeah. 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 Okay, what you do to help you with that hormone spirit, when you see a good looking woman and you wanna, just think AIDS. Your thing will go at real quick. No, man. Because some of y'all think all AIDS people walk around, like, yeah, shit. It ain't like that. It ain't like that. Right, Malachi? Right. Esau, Esau got medication for them to look healthy. All right. Esau said, you could live 40, 30 years. You know, you could go there, you could hormonger, you could have sex without condom. When you get sick, you know, I'm going to give you medication. You're going to live for 40, 30, 40, 50 years. You understand? And, 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 and guess this. This is what he also do. This is what Esau also do to push that 
wicked adulterer spirit in, in, in the community, all right? He said, so we're going to pay for the AIDS medicine. Not just that, we're going to give you, we're going to give you a, your own apartment. We're going to pay your rent. We're going to give you money every two weeks. All right, it's a program Esau got set up called HASA. All right, it's for HIV. I know the first thing is HIV, but the name of it is HASA. If you HIV positive, they pay for your rent and all of that. You understand? So what Esau are doing, they're promoting adultery and so forth in our community. All right? And it's only in the black community they're bringing them AIDS victims. Then they ain't taking them out by Esau because Esau tell them straight, listen, we ain't taking no HASA patient over here. We ain't renting to no HASA patients. In, um, in the program that I'm in in school, they teach us a lot about infection control because we all look at people's mouths and stuff like that. And they say, always assume that someone has something until you can verify that they don't have anything. Mm, that's Treat that's it that way and you'll be all right. Because right. we're exposed to a lot of that stuff. So I, as you're saying that, I'm thinking that's a good rule of thumb for anybody here. Always assume that somebody got something until you can verify that they don't have anything. Yeah, they, have, they, have that for, they have that for us too. We have to, whenever we respond to something, they tell us they got this word they call universal precaution. Mm -hmm. Because you have to always think about what they could have. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So from there, let's go to First Ezra 3. We're going to talk about the next uh, addictive bondage in our people's minds is alcohol, wine. First Ezra 3 and 10. First Ezra 3 verse 10. The first rope, wine is the strongest. So this is one of the three bodyguards that was guarding the Persian king. The Persian king said, whoever gives the wisest saying, I'll give you riches and fortune. So the first bodyguard, he said the strongest thing on earth, because that was the question. What is the strongest thing on earth? So the first guy said wine. Listen to what he said about wine. Verse 17, and he said unto them, declare unto us your mind concerning the writings. Then began the first who had spoken of the strength of wine. And he said thus, O ye men, how exceeding strong is wine. It causes all men to err that drink it. Notice it says wine causes all men to err that drink it. Go ahead. It maketh the mind of the king and of the fatherless child to be all one. It can make the mind of the king and a fatherless child one. This meaning your mentality will become the same. Go ahead. Of the bondman and of the free man. Of the bondman, the slave man, and the free man. You become have the same mindset. Go ahead. Of the poor man and of the rich. Go ahead. It turneth also every thought into jollity and mirth. It make you laugh at anything. You get drunk, you get some brothers get the, they laugh at everything. Something stupid as hell, they got the giggles. Go ahead. So that, so that a man remembereth neither sorrow nor debt. It make you forget sorrows, it make you forget debts. That's why a lot of people in the ghetto, amongst our people, alcohol, sex, and drugs are escapes for our people. We go to these things to forget sorrows, we go to these things to forget debts. But guess what, when you come out of that delusion, guess what's waiting for you? Sorrow and debt. Go ahead. And then make it every heart rich, uh -huh. so that a man remembereth neither king nor governor, and then make it to speak all things by talents. And when they, were, and when they are in their cups, they, for, they forget their love both to friends and brethren. Right. You get drunk, you forget your love for friends and brethren. You start to say some outrageous things. And guess what? It might even be secrets that your friend told you. You get drunk, all of a sudden you just start to talk. What the hell? And he, tomorrow he ain't gonna remember he said all that. Go ahead. And to make it all, make it to speak all things by talents. And when they are in their cups, they forget their love both to friends and brethren. And the little after draw out swords. Meaning like some brothers like to fight. Like to fight when they get drunk. You got that violent brother. Brother, you don't need to drink no more, ever. Go ahead. But when they are from the wine, they remember not what they have done. See that? When they are from the wine, meaning they become sober again, they remember not what they have done. Go ahead. O ye men, is not wine the strongest that enforces to do thus? And when he had so spoken, he held his peace. Go to Proverbs 31 and 6. We ain't finished with this wine thing. Proverbs 31 and 6. Let me look at it. It might want to start above it. I'm not sure I can look at it. Yeah, that's it. 
Proverbs 31 verse 4. Listen good. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. She's going to explain why. Lest they drink and forget the law. You don't want to drink and forget God's law because that could happen. That's talking about that drunkard state when you forget the law. Go ahead. And pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. And you will pervert judgment of any of the, the afflicted. Go ahead. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish. That's that real strong alcohol to make them forget to subside the pain they may be in. Go ahead. And wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. And wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Okay, was that it? Let him drink and forget his poverty. And remember his misery no more. Y'all see that? So it's like, you know, wine has its purpose. Okay? Those that are suffering unsurmountable misery, misery, the scripture says, let them drink wine. Let them forget this sorrow. Okay? But that don't mean out in the street or out in the body of the congregation. Like Noah. Remember what Noah did? That's why it was no sin what Noah did when he got drunk. Noah thought what? What did he think? Hello? Nobody knows what he thought? Hello, Zakai, help me. Nobody got a clue. Why was he comfortable getting drunk? He knew the law. Yeah, no, because the thing that survived, uh, everybody else was dead on the earth. Everybody on the earth was dead. Everybody. Then you have, who was the other one? Was Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot. He got drunk. Why? What did he, he thought everybody was dead too. Mm -hmm. He saw fire and brimstone kill almost everybody. Kill everybody in the area he was in. He got drunk. That's what the scripture's going into. Mm -hmm. From there, let's go to Proverbs 23. In Proverbs 23 verse 20. Be not among wine bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh. When it says wine bibber, it means winos. People that like to get drunk. Don't be around them. Jump down to verse 30. Verse 30, they that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. So it says, don't sit long at the wine. You get brothers that sip all night. I mean all night. From sun up to sundown, just sipping and sipping and sipping. Wake up, remember there was a brother in his old school. Wake up early in the morning and get drunk. I mean, what, what else is this? What are you doing? Go ahead. At the last, it biteth like a serpent. At the last, it biteth like a serpent. Go ahead. And stingeth like an adder. And it will sting like a poisonous snake. Go ahead. And I shall behold strange women. You look at strange women, women of other nations. Go ahead. And thine heart shall utter perverse you things. You start to utter perverse things. Things that you would not say will come out your mouth looking at strange women. Go ahead. Yay. Thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth upon the top of a mast. They have stricken me, shalt thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. So when you drunk, you get beat. Sometimes you get beat up so bad, you don't even realize. You wake up bruised and broken. Then guess what that drunkard does? He goes right back to the wine. That's what it says. I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. That idiot brother goes right back to the alcohol. Mm -hmm. In the bar fighting. At home fighting. From there, go to Romans 14, 21. This is what Paul said about that. Yes. It was in a recent news story where they just came out with Evaporated liquor that you inhale. Oh yeah, I didn't see that. He saw coming up with some new science. It's see a, that? It's a new bar they got downtown. You know, I have, they have like hookah hookah bars. Yeah. Now it's, it's a it's called a vapatini or something like that. You just sit there and inhale all the alcohol, so it don't like make you throw up and all that. It just goes right to your brain. Mm. Five seconds. Man, that's nothing but a segue to drugs. <laughs> It's a segue to smoking marijuana and the rest of that garbage. That's all it is. It's just a slick way of bringing, bringing us to the doggone dope. Exactly. Now watch what Paul says in Romans 14, 21. Pay close attention. Romans 14, verse 21. It is good neither to eat flesh nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak. So Paul said, 
remember there was an argument between eating foods offered to idols and there was an argument about drinking a lot of wine. Read it again, I thought. It is good neither to eat flesh nor to drink wine nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. Anything. If, if you know your brother has an alcohol problem, don't drink around him. That's what Paul is saying. Don't do it. It's going to make him stumble. Don't offer him a drink. Don't do it. Anything that, that you know is going to cause your brother to stumble, don't do it. It is sin for you to do that. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. 22. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he allows. So if you allow yourself to drink or to eat anything that might have been offered to idols, you're not sure. It says, be happy in the thing that you allow. Go ahead. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So now he goes back to that meat. He says, don't eat that meat if you doubt them. Okay, like when you go, some of y'all like that Chinese food. <laughs> You know daggone well in the, some of these stores you see a statue of Buddha. Some of y'all seen that? Or you go to the Mexican store or the Puerto Rican store, the restaurant, and you see these idols of Lazarus with the little dogs around his feet. And you know daggone, or the, what's the Mex Mexicans be worshiping? A woman. Guadalupe, the demon. You know daggone well that their food was offered to idols. But you got a, a, a brother new in the faith, and the brother came out of that. He says, oh, I don't think we should eat that. If the brother acknowledges, he's worried about the idols, what did Paul say to do? Don't, don't eat it then. Don't eat it. He gave a whole chapter on that. Yep. A whole chapter about that. Now, from there, let's go to Sirach 31:27. Cause Paul, another, in case so no one gets simple, in 1 Corinthians 8, I believe it is, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. He says, that if you order something, if you get food, and the person says to you, this was offered in honor of an idol, he says, don't eat. Y'all understand that? If the person says to you, this was, you go to the store, and the person says, oh, praise mother virgin, whatever the hell names they got, and they're telling you it was offered into idol, Paul says, don't eat it then, don't do it. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Where we at, I thought? Sirach 31. Uh, Sirach 31, 27. Sirach 31, verse 27. Wine is as good as life to a man. Wine is as good as life to a man. So guess what? Wine is good. Good. If it be drunk moderately. Uh-oh, there's the key right there. If what? If it be drunk moderately. <laughs> if it be drunk moderately. That's the key word. That's why when the scriptures talk about Christ drinking wine, he was obeying this. Drink, he drunk it moderately. Give me that Genesis 49. Somebody else. Y'all stop. Can you get that for me? Genesis 49, the prophecy about Christ. And 10. People said, Christ didn't drink wine. His first miracle, knucklehead, was what? He turned water into wine. You think he was sitting at a wedding feast and not taking part in the, uh, the festivities? He was at a party. He took part in the wine. You got it, y'all, son? Verse 12. Genesis 49, verse 12, real quick. Yeah. His eyes shall be red with wine. See that what they, the prophecy was about Christ? His eyes shall be red with wine. Then in Matthew, was 11, 19. <laughs> Give me that one about Christ. Because I'm on Facebook, and people are asking, is it lawful to drink wine because Christ didn't drink wine? And I see these dumb posts. I don't respond because they're stupid and they like to be dumb because if you look at any of the videos online We've gone over that many times. They just want to stir up an argument about stupidity Read Matthew 11 19 for us I see some of the dumbest things on Facebook Sometimes once in a while I respond but most of the time I'm like I ain't saying nothing Negroes love being ignorant. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 11 verse 19 the Son of Man came eating and drinking. The and Son of Man came eating meat, because that's what it's talking about, and drinking, meaning drinking wine. It ain't talking about water, because everybody drink water. Go ahead. And they say, behold, a man gluttonous. Meaning he liked to overeat, they said about him. He was a, a glutton. And a wine bibber. And they called him, the Pharisees called him a wine bibber, because Christ used to sip on his wine a lot. But guess what? You will never read where he was drunk. Why? Because he drunk moderation in moderation. 
moderately. He knew what limit to go to, what limit not to go past. Some of you brothers have not come to that level yet. You know what your level is, but you want to exceed it. That's when you get into problems. Y'all, what's up? Get me a uh, Ecclesiasticus and Apocrypha. <laughs> Sirach 31, verse 27. Why is as good as life to a man? If it be drunk moderately. Come on. What life is then to a man that is without wine? What life is it to man that is without wine? Go ahead. What life is it then to a man that is without wine? For it was made to make men glad. You see the purpose of wine? It was made to what, Gideon? Love is glad. To make men glad. That's the purpose of wine. So if somebody tell you wine is a sin, it's not a sin. It was made to make men glad. The sin comes in when you exceed and become drunk, Josiah. Yeah, the, the scriptures say it makes men glad. So when we don't have enough wine in the school, it makes men sad. <laughs> yes, yes, Josiah. But hey, and you, you brothers that got the, the drinking problem. Go ahead. Hey, sir, where you at? Um, next verse, verse 28. Wine measurably drunk and in season bringeth gladness of the heart. You see that? Wine measurably drunk. So you brothers with the problem, you got to drink it measurably. Understand what you're limited. If, if a little bit is going to push you over, bend you, don't drink. Sometimes, I remember back at, 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 at my house, there was an older sister from Guyana. He used to come by the house and I forgot her name off the top of my head right now. Sister Mary. Sister Mary, thank you. She used to say, I can't drink a lot of wine. Now, she never explained why, but when we broke bread, she would take a little bit of wine like that and fill up with that much water. And she would, that's how she would break bread because she said she could not drink X amount of wine. So she had understanding. Some of you brothers don't have even a mind like that. You see everybody else drinking, you want to drink. No, don't do that. Know yourself. They can drink all day. A lot of brothers drink more than me. I know my love I drink, but so much, and that's it. Then I want coffee and water. That's I, what I do. I drink the lazy side on because I can't that's have That's not it. true, y'all, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's up. Now, listen, it's up. It's the, uh, without the scriptures, the last time I got drunk, I was 21 years old. I was in handcuffs. And all my friends said that I was trying to fight them. So I knew not to do this before it was in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So after that experience, I said, I'm not going to get drunk anymore. You understand? It only took a little bit of liquor and I was that angry drunk. I wanted to fight. And the person that I turned into after my friends told me, and the police officer let me go. He was like, I ain't taking this fool to jail. Just cuff him to calm him down. Um, I was that angry drunk that y'all read about. So, without having the scriptures, I didn't know the scriptures at that time, but I had enough sense to know, don't push my limit and don't do it again. So a lot of times, brothers is all for me and I'm refusing, I said I'm not going to do that again. Some of y'all don't have sense, like the elders saying, y'all will just do it over and over and over. Y'all curse everybody, disrespect everybody, lose your job, fight everybody, disrespect your wife, and you'll stay like that and you won't care. I had that consideration as a young man not to put the people around me in that position. Yeah, and then uh, there's a lot of time we don't understand how powerful is wine, our old drink, our strong drink. You know I mean, like uh, some people cannot drink. Yeah, that's why when you're dealing with one nice thing, because yeah, the person cannot drink. So when he drink, all the women, all the men, they're caught up in, in their spirit. One nice thing have to do with alcohol. Sure. You understand? Because some women cannot drink. Yeah, you understand? One beer will get her. She will she will do a dog if she have to. You understand? Yeah, but some people don't know that. You understand? Yeah, but be very mindful these things, these spirits don't fall upon us. You understand? Exactly. Pro problems usually occur when people t live in the bottle. You understand? Where, where, where they believe that the effects of the wine could solve their problems. You have to be a man sober to solve your problems. Okay, you cannot use the wine or the beer, whatever it is, to think that that's gonna solve your problems. Exactly. Even in these, uh, when the scriptures tell us not to deal in uh, reveling. In the party world, clubs and all that, wine is a big factor, wine, alcohol. They, when I was, used to throw parties back in the world, 
I was with this group, and they would always, we would go to these clubs, and the Edomites would always tell us when I was young. Just, uh, just, just got into college, and they said, listen, you're gonna bring all these people to the party, we're gonna keep the heat up. Water's gonna be minimal, but we're gonna have a lot of alcohol. Because people get hot, they dancing, they're gonna wanna drink. There's a whole science behind it. Yep. That gets the women drunk, that gets you to take them home and have sex. Mm -hmm. It's a whole wicked system in that thing. And they use pretzels. A science. They use pretzels too. Right. They eat pretzels around, a lot of pretzels. Thank you. Don't drop. <laughs> right. Now we're in verse 30. Read on. Verse 30. Drunkenness increases the rage of a fool till he offend. You heard? That's what Deacon Asaph was saying. You gotta know, you gotta know yourself. Drunkenness will increase the rage of a fool until you offend the people that you love. You'll start to offend the people around you. Call it beer muscles. Beer muscles, right. Go ahead. It diminishes the strength and make it wound. Right. No matter how strong the brother is, he's drunk, you're going to beat him down. <laughs> he ain't, his equilibrium is all, everything wrong. That's why in Proverbs said he wakes up bruised up. He want to know who whooped his behind. But he goes right back to the table again to drink. Go ahead. Rebuke not thy neighbor at the wine, and despise him not in his mirth. Give him no despiteful words, and press not upon him with urging him to drink. Don't press upon your neighbor and urging him to drink. Come, like, they go, drink, drink. You ever see them eat them ice? Drink, 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 drink. Chug, chug, whatever it is. And that's what they do. And there's a fight, a brawl up in there. <laughs> so, but what the elders pointed out, if any of y'all brothers got that spirit on you, that you love that feeling of drunkenness, you got the devil on you. Yeah, sure. You got a serious demon on you. Because you're supposed to have enough sense to know this is not right. I knew when I came to sobriety, this was not right. And I don't remember nothing that happened, but I remember everything everybody else said. And I was all I needed to know and that was it. I never knew what it was like to be drunk. So I just have a couple of sips, and I skip. And then I saw family members. I watched them get drunk and turn into monsters. They want to fight. They talking to you nasty. They doing things that you never saw them do. So I already said, I don't want to wind up like that. I hope you understand that. Next scripture, Tobit 4.15. Listen good. Yes. Remember what they, another word for wine is spirits. There you go, you're right. So once you crack that bottle, you're inviting spirits on That's right. Did yeah, you already said another word for wine is spirits. Yep. Esau calls it that for a reason. You're inviting spirits, different spirits into your mind when you get drunk. So before verse 15, mm -hmm. do that to no man which thou hatest. Don't do to anybody that which you hate yourself. Go ahead. Drink not wine to make thee drunken. And don't drink wine to make thee drunken. Don't drink wine to make thee drunken. Go ahead. Neither let drunkenness go with thee in thy journey. And don't let drunkenness go with thee in your travels. So that was always a law in Israel. That is still in effect today. From there, we're gonna touch on stages to overcome the sex, demons, the drug demons, the weed and the alcohol. The first thing we all have to do is confess. That's the first step in it. You gotta admit there's a problem. Give me that, Proverbs 28, 13. Mm -hmm. And the first confession you give is before the most, to the most high, in the name of Christ. That's the first thing, Proverbs 28, 13. Some brothers don't like to confess. They like to lie and deny. Right, lie and deny. I like that. Write that down. Lie and deny. <laughs> they like to lie and deny. Exactly. Proverbs. While looking you in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> that brother good. He can rap on that brother good. <laughs> I ain't got no problem. <laughs> Where you at? You Proverbs 28 verse 13. He that covereth their sins shall not prosper. So anybody that covers their sin, whether it's the sex demons, the drug demons, the alcohol demons, the Bible says, God says, you will not prosper. You will not get the kingdom. Go ahead. 
But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. But whoso confesses their problem, their sin, and the key is what word? What's the key word? Forsaketh, forsaketh. shall have shall what? So shall have, have mercy. mercy. You want mercy in the midst of these problems. You want mercy. That comes through confession and forsaking. And guess what? In forsaking, give me that in Ecclesiastes about a righteous man fall of seven times. Give me that one. I'm not saying it's going to be a bed of roses. Some brothers can overcome things like that. It's not a problem. Other brothers, other sisters stumble in this walk. Proverbs 24, verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times and rises up again. You see that? A just man falls seven times. And that seven is just the number there. It says, but rises up again. He doesn't go back out into the world. He keeps on striving and fighting to get through this. Whatever his or her problem is, he does not, he or she does not give up. Okay, from there, let's go to James 5.16. So confession, write this down. We're dealing with confession. And this is the first stage in overcoming your addictions. James 5 verse 16. Confess your faults one to another. Now, it says, conf now this is not dealing with your confession to the Most High like we read in Proverbs. This one is dealing with your brother. Read it again. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. You see that? That you may be healed. Now, was that the whole verse? The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, here comes the problem. Because some of you, here's the fear factor. If I tell this brother, he might have a big mouth and humiliate me in front of everybody. Hmm, I don't want to talk to a brother like that. Or I talk to this brother over here, he might have a big mouth and tell all my personal business to everybody. Give me Sirach 6 and 6. Sirach 6 verse 6. Be in peace with many. Nevertheless, have but one counselor of a thousand. Read it again. Be in peace with many. Nevertheless, have but one counselor of a thousand. When you're going through something, you need a counselor. Somebody who can walk you through it. Okay? Walk you through it. And, and Elder, yeah. that's a very powerful scripture you just pulled. Because how many of you in here has that one brother that you could go to and tell your most personal, intimate details to and not worry about it. Your hands. Very few hands. Everybody's hands should have went up. That's right. Everybody's hands should have went up because the scriptures tell you that you're supposed to have one counselor out of a thousand people you know. Okay? Because that's going to save you. And some of you are just saying in your head, I'm going to stay in this sin. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm going to keep my mouth sh shut. And you're going to destroy yourself because you don't trust nobody or you don't have nobody around you to trust. But now you're dealing with men of the most high, you're in a, in a different circle. You're in a, you're, you're with a, a unique bunch of brethren here. You should be able to look to one of the brethren here. Everybody in this room can be wicked. Everybody <laughs> up here can be wicked. There should be somebody that you look at up there and say, I can talk to that brother. So there's no excuse. You people online. You people in this school, there is no excuse. Y'all just read the commandment to have yourself a counselor. Yeah, uh, yeah, just because Brother Aesop said, I have a perfect scripture for that. Give me the, the book of Sirach. I think it's uh, 4, 4 and 26. Sirach 4 verse 26. Be not ashamed to confess thy sins. Hmm. Enforce not the course of the river. Okay, be not ashamed to confess your sin. Now let's let's use the scripture in twofold, right? Mosai said, "Don't be ashamed to confess your sin," right? So, so if you if you are ashamed to confess your sin, what you think your sin gonna do? Shame you. You understand? So if you are afraid to confess your sin, that means your sin gonna shame you. Where your sin gonna bring you? Because it's just like a perfect example. Because some of us we you, we come from the world. We come from many many ways of life. You understand? That's why Mosai say use one as a counsel. You understand? Out of a thousand. Now, if you don't use like Deacon Zesab just said, your, your sin will shame you. When you when you hear in front of the congregation. And shame you in front of many brothers you were trying to hide from. And pull you out of this trouble. That's right. In your confession to that one counselor, you should also mention, let, 
use an example. If you hook, if you have a particular uh, drug that you're doing, let's say it's uh, smoking cocaine or crack or something. Let's use one of those. When you confess to your counselor, also confess the reason why you feel that you have to do it. You understand? In other words, you when you're confessing it, you're also saying. Why do I feel that I need to do this? You're explaining the reason why, because that right there will begin. It says that confession is good for the soul. Also bringing it up as to the reason why you're hooked on it can begin the healing process. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Because you will begin to address the, 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 the reason why you crave it. Now you're focusing on the reason why you went into it in the first place. Now you're dealing with the actual sickness. Then you can begin to look for the help. And that's why the Apostle Paul said, examine yourselves. A lot of times we ask some of you brothers why, and you say, I don't know why I do such and such. You're not sitting down and examining exactly. yourself. Exactly, you do know why. You gotta go before the Most High, pray, and think about why you do it. I said, I told one brother who said he didn't know. I said, either you're ignorant as hell or you're a liar. One of those two. Because I know why I do the things I do. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. So when you say, I don't know, you're hiding something. That's the point. <laughs> and let's never, just stick to them being a and damn you, and liar. You, and you will never, <laughs> you're just a damn liar. That's but, it. Let's just leave it there. But the point is, you will never deal with the situation until you really address the reason why you're doing it. Right. The person who you're counseling with should also... So listen, why don't you tell me what got you started in it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, even what y'all was upset. I wanted to make that point. I'm glad he pushed that. You heard what he said about the counselor also? Because some of y'all threw your hands up real quick when I said, how many of you got counselors? The counselor ain't somebody that you can tell him your business and it's going to stay right there. If he's a good counselor, he's going to help you get over the problem. And if he can't help you get over the problem, he's going to find somebody else who can help him. Y'all come to me with problems and I don't have the answer, I'm blowing up the elders for him. Okay, if he don't have the answer, he'll meditate on it. It may take him a week, two weeks, he'll come back with something. But don't come to me to tell me stuff just to tell me. A lot of times y'all tell me your problems. I got a headache for a week because I don't have an answer for you and it bothers me. I don't want you coming and confiding in your business to me because now I feel guilty of what you're doing and I haven't given you an answer for it. So a good counselor is going to be able to assist you with your problems. If we heard evil the other day about brothers knowing what other brothers was doing and not saying nothing. You ain't no counselor. Right. Let, let, let me show you the power. Uh, uh, well, I mean, uh, let me show you the power within confession. Confession, when you confess that demon, believe me, that demon left. When you confess that demon, you face it face to face, that demon left you. Now you go into the process, get rid of it. Never come back because you get in scripture, get it, get your mind because you have faced it. But when you deny that demon, that demon ain't going nowhere. You understand? That's the power in uh, uh, confection. When you confess that demon face to face, I'm telling you, brothers, this thing works. You understand? Applying the scripture with it. Yashua has something. Oh, Yashua, you want to say something? Yeah, no, I, I, I'm glad he brought it out. I wanted to make sure, because, you know, you would think it wouldn't have to be said with that, but it, it's not someone who's going to you know, you have the itching ears that's gonna tell you what you wanna hear right. and hide your sin. Cause you got a lot of brothers and sisters that are simple and they talk, sin gravitates to sin. Right. Spirits gravitate to the same type of spirits. And you gotta examine sometimes why people wanna talk to you, you exactly. and only you. you. Right. Are you correcting them? Are you bringing the scripture? Mm -hmm. Are you telling them straight that if they don't do something about it, you're gonna bring it forth and follow the, the guidelines that the scripture says forth? Don't deceive yourself. All right, and for those of y'all who said, because I can't stress it enough, because I've counseled certain people about that. Mm. They got people who they talk to because they hold their secrets, mm. and it's evil. When it's evil, it's not about holding your evil secrets. Right. All right. You would think that we wouldn't have to say something like that, but there's people who are like that. Say it. You gotta say it. That's the Most High says man. that that man's blood will be require at your hands. Exactly. You're responsible for him. Once he told you his business and you know what's going on, because some of y'all know each other's business in here, and y'all stay quiet about it, till it blow up. Then the elders asking, find out who else knows. Then we find out it's one, two, three, four, five. Now y'all all guilty of that evil, because nobody said nothing. 
let me say something else. Counselors are like doctors. Yep. <laughs> Do y'all understand what I mean by that? When I say counselors are like doctors. Because if you examine how doctors operate, you might have one particular doctor that's dealing with a patient and he has a particular condition. Now he's, he's dealing with the patient, but this particular situation that he's dealing with or this ailment is complex. So this particular one doctor goes to a pool of doctors and they all sit down and examine this patient. And they all have different ways of looking at it. But at the end of the day, that one doctor is still gonna deal with that patient. But he had to go and share the information with the team of doctors that he's working with. That's, that's why we're called counselors. Counselors are doctors. That's a perfect Because the whole idea, the whole idea is, to, is to get the help from all different points of the experience table and help that patient. Right. That's ever, a good point. Y'all ever watch the, the, the sitcom House? Yeah. With that doctor that walked with a lip? Right. I was watching an yeah, episode yeah. the other day. You know he's a top doctor. Right. And there was a woman that was sick. Something was wrong with her heart. And he couldn't figure it out. So he turned to his staff. His staff couldn't give him an answer to what was wrong with it. With, with the lady's heart. So he fired them. He said, I don't need you. And I... It, it, I thought at the end of the show he would hire them back, but he wound up letting them go and it was bothering him, but it goes to the, the analogy that Yawasak just gave. You had that one doctor that had all the wisdom, but his team there was, when he stepped to them, that was their job, That's, that was his staff, for him to be able to throw ideas back and forth and throw different scenarios back and forth while the patient um, is sitting there deaf, and in frustration, he fired them. So like Yawasak just said, you're a doctor when this problem is brought to you. You're evil if the problem is brought to you and you're just sitting there just listening and listening. And the person that's with you is being destroyed day after day and you watching them and you keeping your mouth shut. He's dying on the table. He's dying on the table. Right. That's why there's no, some of you think there's a magic scripture. Give me the magic scripture that's going to make it boop, disappear. It's not going to happen. It's something that you're going to have to fight through day after day. Like Ecclesiastes 2 and 1 says, when you come to serve the Lord, what? It's going to come. It's going to come. Back to Sirach 6 and 6. Sirach 6 verse 6. Be in peace with many. Nevertheless, have but one counselor of a thousand. Now your question may be, who should I choose as that one counselor? The next verse explains. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. And be not hasty to credit you got to prove that person first prove them prove them but the fear like the brothers were saying the fear is you don't want everything to come out but guess what if a problem comes to me that i cannot explain or help you with i gotta sit back pray about it i may sit down with the brother and say listen this is what's going on what can we show this brother to help him or her that's what i expect the officers to do if they hear something if they can't answer it, they'll sit down amongst themselves and discuss it. It's not done to humiliate you. It's not done to destroy you. It's done to help you. Everybody understand that? Okay. We don't. Verse 8. For some man is a friend for his own occasion and will not abide in the day of thy trouble. And there is a friend who being turned to enmity. This is the part that everybody's afraid of. Verse 9. Read it again. And there is a friend who being turned to enmity and strife will discover thy reproach. Y'all see that? Sometimes you get in an argument with your friend that you counseled with. Soon as your friend get mad, your friend reveal all your stuff before everybody to destroy you, to humiliate you. That's why I said above, you got to prove that friend. Okay, prove him. We don't. Again, some friend is a companion at the table and will not continue in the day of thy affliction. But in thy prosperity, he will be as thyself. He will be bold over thy servants. Uh -huh, come on. If thou be brought low, he will be against thee. He will hide himself from thy face. Separate thyself from thine enemies and take heed of thy friends. A faithful friend is a strong defense, and he that have found such an one have found a treasure. Very good. When that sin begins to spill out into the congregation, it must be brought forth. Because Christ spoke about the offending of the little ones. What did Paul talk about sin? A little leaven. Leaven of the whole lump. You let it ex go from one body to it's going to spread. You got to deal with it quick. 
that is still the uh, that is still the duty of a doctor, right. so to speak. Because the idea of a doctor, if the cancer is spreading, the, the, the thing is to nip it and get it out. That's right. Y'all understand what he's saying? Okay. So bringing it before the congregation is because the cancer, you can't even, it won't stop. Right. At the first stage, it's, it's resistant to all of the stuff that you, you go. here comes bringing them the law, bringing them the judgments on, and it ain't working. Right. All of the medicines you're throwing at it, it ain't working. Now it has the potential to destroy the whole body. No, no, no. Now we got to get get you out of here. Yeah, you put good. it on quarantine. That's what right. quarantine. Exactly. That's the word. Thank you. So you got to quarantine it that's before it spreads. That's what I was looking for. Because right. a pandemic. Just help. And that's the same thing Christ said point. in Matthew 18 about that brother who rejects uh, the council. The council. It said, put him out. Treat him like a heathen and a publican. Get the cancer out before it corrupts everybody. They got to go. So now. No, so now, we dealt with confession. That's the first stage in overcoming a problem. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. The next stage deals with no fellowship. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Give me Ephesians 5.11. This ex a lot of times our addictions is fortified. fortified because of a friend who has the same problem we got and is feeding it. Ephesians 5 and 11. Ephesians 5 verse 11 and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them read it again and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness so you brothers with the drinking problems some of you got friends in the world who got drinking problems they like to drink if you know that have no fellowship with them you brothers that smoke weed crack whatever you want have no fellowship with them because it's going to keep the sin alive. Read it again, Aitan. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Now watch this. This is what Abraham did. Give me Genesis 12 and 1. This is what Abraham did in the midst of idolatry. This is what the Lord had Abraham do. Genesis 12 verse 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Do y'all see that? The Most High God told Abraham, leave your father's house. When you read about Abraham, his father's house was not honoring the Most High. The Most High said, leave them. Some of you got fat. Some of y'all love your family so much. It supersedes your love for God in Christ. Yep. It keeps you in the midst of sin. And you all, should I go to this family? Get No! Yep. They all wicked as hell. And you keep hanging out with them. We're saying this to save your life. Separate from them. An elder. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, the person who's supposed to separate, he's the only one reading the scripture. Right. And every single family around him is wicked and ungodly. Yep. But he's still fighting to stay around him. So yep. what that say about you? That's right. Exactly. Get Proverbs 12, 26. Listen good to you that like to hold on to friends with demons. Proverbs 12, verse 26. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduces them. You see that? You come in as truth, and you always ask, what about my friend? What about my mama? What about my brother, my sister, my father? And you know they're wicked as hell. You might have a close relationship with them, but it says what? Read it again. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. You're more righteous. Why? Because you got the truth. You know the law. You know your nationality. You're more righteous than your neighbor. But the way of the wicked seduces them. That wicked brother or sister will seduce you. It always goes down that way. When you see they got that resistant spirit and you still want to be around them, they are going to seduce you into sin. Back into the way you used to be. Back into your former lifestyle. Yep. You must separate from that if you want help. That's the second stage on getting help out of your addictions, your problems. Okay? Give me Matthew 5, 29. This is what Christ said. 29. Let's start at 28 so we can keep the thought in line for you sex brothers. Matthew 5, verse 28. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out. And cast it from thee. Because that right eye might be your homeboy, your friend. You know before you came into this truth, your friend always took you around the girl spots. This girl over here, like this, this one, this. he know all the girls. But he your friend. You want to hang out with him. The Bible says if your right eye offends you, pluck it out. What does it say? If you're what? 
And if thy right eye if your right hand offend you, cut it off. Read on. If thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out. And if your right eye offend, that's somebody close to you, somebody you love, somebody you think you need. The Bible says, cut it off or pluck it out. Go ahead. And cast it from thee. And cast it from you. Why? For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. You hear what Christ said? It's better that that person perish more than you be thrown into destruction. Why? Because you got that friend, that brother or sister, that neighbor that you just feel you can't do without. But you know that dude ain't no good. Every conversation is wicked. And he's seducing you and seducing you to go back to think evil, to go against the laws. The Most High said, Christ said, cut that hand off. You know, that, that goes back to that thing that we was talking about with the judgment. The question that you ask the officers, mm -hmm. the same thing. Because if you allow that, let's say we deal with somebody that don't want to change, that right. don't want to get themselves right. And, you, and he goes through step one, the one-on-one, -on -one, then to get to the, uh, to the other steps all the way up to the point where it got to come out before the congregation. Right. If we allow that person to stay here, it will eventually destroy everybody. It's the same thing because that will seduce everyone. That spirit's got to go. Exactly. Cut it off. If it offends you, we're going to pluck you out of this and treat you like the heathens. You got to go. Exactly. That's what Paul did. First Timothy 1 and 20. Because even in that, the, the congregation level, like y'all was bringing up, you had brothers in Israel bringing up different doctrines. Christ said they got to go to. 1 Timothy 1 verse 20. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Because Hymenaeus and Alexander started to blaspheme. Paul had cast them out, meaning he delivered them to Satan. Okay, that's what he did. That's what Christ is saying in Matthew, 5, in Matthew 18. Okay? About if they won't hear you, treat them like a heathen and a publican. That means deliver them to Satan. When Christ said in Matthew 5, if your right hand offends you, cut it off. If your right eye offends you, pluck it out. That's delivering them unto Satan. Remember the dude in the church that was committing fornication? He had sex with his father's wife. His stepmother. He had sex with his stepmother. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 13. But them that are without, God judge it. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Let's start up in verse 9. I want you brothers to see this very good. Because Paul gave us a list of reasons to get rid of brothers. He gave us a list. Watch this. Verse 9. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. Not to company with fornicators. Go ahead. Yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world. He said, I'm not talking about the fornicators of this world because you can't escape them. No matter where you go at work, your job, there's fornicators all around you. Go ahead. Or extortioners. Or with idolaters. Wait, wait. Go ahead, read it again. Verse 10. Yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters. For then must she needs go out of the world. In order to escape the fornicators of the world, you have to die. So Paul said, I'm not talking about that. But this is what I'm talking about. Read the next verse. But now I have written unto, unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother. If any man that is called a brother, he's in the truth. Go ahead. Be a fornicator. Be a fornicator. You know that your brother is out with prostitutes and you, you my friend. I'm not going to say, no, that's evil as hell. Go ahead. Or covetous. Or covetous. This brother's always looking to Take what does not belong to him. Go ahead. Or an idolater. Or a, you know he's secretly worshiping idols. Go ahead. Or a railer. Or a railer. That's somebody that's always against the leadership. Railing against the laws of the Most High. Go ahead. Or a drunkard. Or a drunkard. He's in the body now. He's drunk. He's fighting with brothers. He's trying to touch the sisters. That brother must go, Paul says. Go ahead. Or an extortioner. Or an extortioner. He's thinking of ways how to get money from the body. How can I get money out of this brother? Go ahead. With such an one, no not to eat. So Paul gave us a list. Don't eat with brothers like that. Don't eat with them. Now, let's jump to the last stage in overcoming a problem. It's called praying and fasting. That's the last level. Give me that Matthew 17 and 20. This is the third level on overcoming a problem. The first is confession. 
The, sec the second is having no fellowship with people that's bringing, keeping you in the sin. The third is praying and fasting. Matthew 17, verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. Start above it. Verse 19. Then came the disciples to Jesus, to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? Why could not we cast the devil out of this man? Because some of our addictions, guess what they are? Demons. Demons in our mind, they got strongholds. Look what Christ said, read on. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place. Give me the part about the demon. Did you, did you get to it yet? About praying and fasting. Yes, in here. Go ahead. Uh, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it this kind goeth not How out. How be it, this is the part I wanted to get to. How be it this kind of demon, this kind of stronghold in your mind, in your soul, in your spirit, goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. This kind of demon can only be removed by praying and fasting. Sometimes we got problems no matter what they are. Christ says some things can only be changed through praying and fasting. Everybody understand that? Yes, now that's another level. That's another level. Now you gotta remember that first level. Give me that first one you read earlier. Wisdom of Solomon. I'm gonna show you the connection. Wisdom of Solomon, 16, verse 12. For it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health. It wasn't medicines that restored the Israelites to health. Go ahead. But thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things. That's what I wanted y'all to see. It's the word of God that healeth all things. So link precept that with Matthew 17, 20, 21 about the praying and fasting. You got the word of God. Then you couple that with the praying and fasting. That helps us to overcome. That's why when we have our monthly fast, it's not for no reason. We instituted that because there's problems in the body. There's addictions in the body. There's problems in the body that we have trouble overcoming. So that's why we institute monthly fasts. Everybody understand that? Yes. And like I tell you, it's voluntary. It's not a law. It's voluntary. You take part in it if you want. If you don't, okay. If you do, we we'll praise it. Yeah. Christ just explained to you that certain problems we're going to encounter in the body, in the body can, only be, can only be overcome by what? So that's why the elders said, Y'all men, we're well, going to do it voluntary. Y'all going to do it once a month, every month. Because we, now we have power when certain problems are thrown at us. Because some of y'all may think we can handle everything. Yep. That's not the deal. Right. We get the power to deal with y'all through the fasting and through the prayer. Okay? So, because some of you, I ask, did you fast? Oh, no, no. Next month, next month. <laughs> the only time y'all fast is for the Day of Atonement. Right. <laughs> That's it. And guess what? The Day of Atonement is fasting for what? Sin. That's it. The fasting we do is for whatever. What problems you got? Blessing. You might want a blessing. You might want to overcome a certain thing. So we have that monthly fast, which is voluntary. Right. Now, the reason it's voluntary, some of y'all, I know sometimes brothers forget. We got to try to keep our mind cognizant. Some of us are sick. I understand that too. You know. Yeah. Uh, from there, Tobit 12 and 8. Tobit 12 verse 8. Prayer is good with fasting. You hear what he said? Prayer is good with fasting. Go ahead. And alms. And alms. And righteousness. And righteousness. You try your best to rehearse these righteous acts. From there, I gave you three major problems. Sex, drugs, and what's the other one? Alcohol. Now I'm giving you three levels to overcome. What is it? Confession. Confession? Separation. Separation? And now, fasting, fasting and praying. I right, thought what you got? Daniel 9, 9 verse 3. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him. That's all. I just wanted to run first. You finished the verse? So you see how our forefather Daniel, it said he fasted and prayed and made his confession to the Lord. That's a level all of us must come to. 
Every last one of us. Elder, you shouldn't yeah. have stopped him. You should have let him read the next verse. What's the next verse? Read the next verse. Verse 5. For, 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 for you people who are scared, let's see what he confessed. Let's see what he confessed. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O oh Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping a covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned and have, we have what? We have sinned. We have what? We have sinned. So that's what he was confessing. You scaredy cats. You I'm not telling nobody. You, I don't want no one to know. Read it again. We have sinned. We have what? We have sinned. Some of y'all don't want nobody to know what you're doing. But Daniel openly said what? We have sinned. Read on. And have committed iniquity. And have done wickedly. And have done what? And have done wickedly. Some of your minds ain't there yet. Your minds are not there nowhere where Daniel is. And so, I'm, just, so just look forward, look towards judgment coming to your behind. Because your mind got to be on a level like that. Where you're looking at what you're doing and saying, it's time to have that talk with God. <laughs> Read on. And have rebelled, even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgment. Departing from what? Thy precepts and from thy judgment. Because the elder went through the answer to all your problems, which were what? Read it again. Even the, by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgment. So there's no excuse for nobody in here to be on drugs, to be having sex problems or alcohol. Because he gave you all the precepts. So if you still want to stay the way you are, you on your own. This is not the place for you. I'm sure you can overcome. How many of you took part in the fast tonight? Raise your hand. Okay. Keep your hands up. Fasting requires what? It starts with a D. Discipline. If you can discipline yourself for one day, you can discipline yourself for two days. Because when you discipline yourself, you're denying a craving your body has automatically. Food. Food and water. You're denying it. You're... you're you're disciplining your body. You're subjecting your body to submit to your will. So you can do that same thing with any addiction you have. You have the ability. It's there within you. I hope y'all understand. I'll try to make as plain as I can. Right, right. That's plain. Yes, Dis discipline helps you resist impulse. Because that's what a lot of these things are. These sinful impulses that, that we would just readily just jump into. Mm -hmm. The discipline jumps up and says, wait a minute. This is going against what I what I have planned, so you will, you would resist it. Okay. The, 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 that's what the difference we have to know. Being men, you have to understand that all these things are our thoughts. That's all it is. You know how Esau is saying that you understand this is all thoughts. The thought have to come for you to manifest. This thing is no uh, uh, heavy addiction where you you can crumble over it. It's just a thought. Now you can control that thought. Then you can be a master over the thought. The drugs is a thought. The alcohol is a thought. Anything in your mind is a thought. You understand? That you have to overmaster the thoughts. That's all it is. Exactly. Look at Job 36 and 10. Job 36 and 10. Pay close attention. We're almost done, but I want y'all to bear with me just for a little while longer. And believe me, what goes for y'all goes for me too. I'm no angel. Think I ain't the son of God. I got every demon all up in me. I fight daily. Every day I'm got to kick a demon in the behind. Get out. Stop. Job 36 and 10. Job 36 verse 10. He openeth also their ear to discipline. See what the Lord does? He openeth the ear of the Israelites to discipline. That's something Negroes and Latinos lack in their lifestyles. We lack that growing up. But God says he opens our ears to discipline. Because guess what? His laws are discipline. And it comes on a day by day rehearsal, rehearsal, rehearsal. Go ahead. He openeth also their ear to discipline and commandeth that they return from iniquity. And he commands that we return from iniquity. Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 5. Some of us that may not be bound with uh, drugs or alcohol or sex demons, Guess what, there's something in your mouth, it might be that tongue, curbing the tongue. It could be something as small as that. Like remember James says, what little, how does, uh, what fire a tongue can cause? It's a world of iniquity. The tongue, some people got a problem curbing that. You got it, Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 5? Wisdom of Solomon 1 verse 5. 
For the Holy Spirit of discipline. The Holy Spirit of what? Of discipline. Of what? Discipline. What? Discipline. The Holy Spirit of discipline. God is about discipline. Go ahead. Will flee deceit. That's why he says regarding your children, he says hold your youth to what? <laughs> to labor. To labor lest their lewd acts make an offense unto you. Because growing up, children, you give them idle time. Sitting, I know what I did when I was idle. All the dudes, all those little boys had nothing to do. Hey, let's look at the Playboy magazine. Yeah! And we all sitting around looking. Idle time, nothing to do. Big brother got this in the house. Daddy got this. I'm going to show you what my daddy got. Idle time. It's, it's, it's a world of iniquity. They say idle time is the devil's playground. That's what happens. We all was young kids and we know what we got into. And we know what sins we committed and what stuck to us to this day. Read that again. For the Holy Spirit will, I'm sorry, for the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding. So we got to have understanding. We got to want that discipline in order to keep and stay in these laws. From there, Sirach 18, 14. Sirach 18, verse 14. I, I got to get through this for the benefit of all of us. He has mercy on them that receive discipline. You see that? God has mercy on them that receive discipline. Was that it? And that diligently seek after his judgment. And that diligently seeks after his judgment. Jump down to verse 30. Verse 30. Go not after thy lust. See that? Go not after thy lust. The lust could be anything. And first thing we hear about lust, we think of just sex only. Yes, it includes sex, but it's not, that's not the only lust there is in the world. Weed is a lust. Drugs is a lust. Yep. Alcohol is a lust. Yep. Go ahead, read it again. Go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thy appetites. But refrain thyself from thy appetite. That requires discipline, which requires the application of God's laws. That's how you build discipline in your life. Was that it, I thought? Yes. Go to 2nd Ezra 1667. 2nd Ezra 16, verse 67. Behold, God himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins. See that? Fear God. Some of you fear man. Don't fear man. Many of the, many of the things, the, the lust, the addictions you got, we all got in some other shape, form, or fashion. Don't fear man. Fear God, though. Read it again. Behold, God himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities. To meddle no more with them. You forever. see that? To meddle no more with them. To meddle no more with them. That's the problem with what a lot of us do. We meddle with it. By meddling, we have that friend over. That old friend from the world. That girl we used to know. That sister we used to know. Have her over. Have him over. And it takes on a life of its own. You're meddling with the sin you're trying to overcome. Read it again. Behold, God himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities. To meddle no more with them forever. So shall God lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. God shall deliver you from all trouble. He sees that discipline in your life. You're trying to acquire that. He will lead you from all trouble. Sirach 34, 26, please. Listen good. Now we have the monthly fast. We have the day of atonement. But listen good to this. Sirach 34, verse 26. So is it with the man that fasteth for his sins, and goeth again and doeth the same. Who will hear his prayer? Or what doth this humbling prophet him? You hear what? That's what the Lord wants us to be mindful for. Of A lot of time we fast for our sins, and then we each go back and do the same thing again. It happens a lot. Keep that in mind. From there, go to Matthew 12, 43. So like I'm... I mentioned, I spoke about the three majors that's like when you read the New Testament. Paul, oh, it seemed like the most major thing Paul dealt with was what? Lust. Lust. Those lust, sexual lust. Every other chapter, Paul was hitting on that. And guess what? In this society we live in, it's a sexual world. From the commercials, we watch everything. When we walk the street, on the train, wherever, sex, sex, it's everywhere. That's why Paul in the New Testament touched it a lot. But guess what? There's some of you may think you are absolved from tonight's class. Don't feel like that. Some of you got miser spirits. You're troubled with that. You know that spirit that, that hates brothers and sisters. They won't do nothing to help nobody. Yeah, right. Some of you battle with that. 
Yep. You don't know what hospitality, that's a demon on you. Yep. <laughs> so don't think today's class don't affect you in no shape or fashion. It affects everybody. Yep. You just got to know thyself. Amen. You understand that? Where we at? Matthew 12, verse 43. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a man. Listen good. Because when you repent, the unclean spirit leaves you. It might be an anger spirit. That's a demon. It may leave you. It might be a miser, niggered spirit. A cheap cat that ain't doing nothing for nobody. Spirit. Or that tongue spirit like to talk and gossip. Murmur about everything. The unclean spirit leaves you. Go ahead. He walketh through dry places. That spirit is wandering through dry places. Come on. Seeking rest and findeth none. Then he said, I will return unto my house from whence I came out. I'm going to go back to Joe. Because when I was in Joe, I was in a good place. Joe had a nice bed for me. He had a stove there for me. There was a couch. There was even a TV set. That's that spirit that left you. That spirit could be called envy or jealousy, hatred, drugs, marijuana. Sex, it can be called anything. Gambling. Go ahead. And when he has come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits. Then he goes and gets seven other spirits. More wicked than himself. Because you might think, well, my problem is only murmuring. Hey, I, gotta, I murmur against the leadership. I murmur when they bring out laws. That's my only problem. But that spirit comes back to you. And he don't come alone. He brings seven other spirits called, maybe called jealousy, hatred, envy, envy homosexuality, homosexuality mm -hmm. drug addiction. He brings, and then you hear this. Who is it? You remember me. Me and you was old friends. <laughs> then you might, I'm going to show you how Melon, you open the door. You see seven spirits out there. More wicked than that one. You say, okay, I'm going to let you in. You let that one spirit, you close the door real quick. And you chilling with that one spirit, but the other seven demons are still waiting. One of these days we gonna get up in there. Because why? That's you praying and that's you stumbling back in that sin. Then you push it out again. But one day it's gonna take a hold. And that second demon gonna put his foot in the door and go, we coming in now. And that's when you fall back in the world. Yes, right. And there's no help for you. No hope for you. Read that again, I thought. And they, um, then go up he and take it to themselves seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Right, because that last state, you're going to be worse than you was before. You had one problem before, now you've got seven other demons on you. And you don't know how in the world your mind has gotten caught up into that madness. You back out in the world. From there. Uh, 2nd Ezra 16, 16, 16 verse 77 in Sirach. I mean 2nd Ezra, sorry. 2nd Ezra 16, 77. Elder, yeah. I had something about, the elder made a point about some of you with your tongue. You don't know how to control your mouth. There's been incidents that have been brought to our ears of people belittling other people with their mouth. And in their head, they think it's a small thing. And these are men who you see, they're wise, they know the scriptures, they're smart, you look at them, they're powerful, and that one little sin pops out, you cannot control your mouth. You that person that if you don't put that in check, you're going to have those seven more demons coming. Because y'all thinking that it's a little thing. Because you're running your mouth and you're, bel and you're belittling people. But that's a small demon coming with seven more powerful demons to come and rip you apart. Because you just use that demon of your, your wicked tongue at the moment when you need it. But eventually you're going to open the door and bring more demons with you. And I hope you understand it because that's why I remember in Ephesians it says foolish, I'll use jesting. Foolish jesting is not convenient. You know the, the dozens when you're cracking on somebody, you're joking them? Some brothers do that. But guess what? There will come a time right behind that spirit, if you let it out of control, will become the spirit of hatred. Many times there's a root to it. Why do you do that? Why do you feel a nest and need to put brothers down and humiliate them? What's the root of it? When you examine yourself, you, you come to the realization there's a spirit of jealousy there and a spirit of hatred. And that can grow, it can turn into what? A fist fight.
From you and that brother getting into a fist fight, it's going to grow into something else. So like ASAP is saying, don't think it's just a little sin. That little, a spark of fire is a small spark. Yep. You put it on something dry, what can happen with that one spark? Right. It burn a whole house down. So don't think, oh, it's just a little sin. Elder, you quoted the scripture, but you, you just didn't bring it out. It was James chapter 3, verse 6, what the elder said. I got it. He says, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body and set it on fire the course of nature, and it set on fire of hell. So the elder quoted the scripture, he just didn't bring it out. And some of you don't realize that's how your mouth is. You cannot control your mouth. You're nasty to people. And you think that that person just, just because one person dismissed your nasty mouth, don't think the next brother's gonna do it. Because some of you will be like, ah, oh, that's just him, that's just the way he talks. Come, come to me with that mouth, and I'm gonna handle you. Because I notice how they're picking certain people who they say it to and who they're not going to say it to and this and this and that. Yeah. And some of you just dismiss it. Please bring it my way. <laughs> Please. Because the scriptures say that that tongue is like fire. Yeah. Some of you men do it to the women. Okay, you take your tongue and you belittle the woman with your tongue. And you feel that that's a means of control. You are nobody in the most high's eye. If you got to belittle your woman to put her in check, you are nothing. You're not no future king, no officer, no leader, no nothing. You're just a person who knows how to take your tongue and use it as fire. And it's the end of that scripture is, and it's set on fire of hell. That's the path you go going. Because you can't control your mouth. That goes back into that thing about uh, addiction again. Where you feel like you have to belittle someone. There's something going on in your head. Something going on in your spirit. There's, there's, there's... What's the word? There's a, uh, an, an inadequacy in you that has not been fulfilled where you feel like you have to uh, dump on someone else. There's a void in you that needs to be checked. Exactly. Or not let things go. Right. Okay, something could have been squashed and over it and every time you find the right moment, you're bringing it up. <laughs> you're bringing it up. Why are you bringing this up? I thought we spoke about it already. Nah, 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 it's bothering me. I still, I'm going to use this and I'm going to tear you down and I'm going to destroy you with it. <laughs> That's that fire. Right. Now watch this. Second Ezra, we're almost done. 1676. 77. I want 76. Oh, okay. 76. Let's start at 76. Second Ezra 16, verse 76. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord God, let not your sins weigh you down and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. So, the... Behind this class we went over, examine yourselves. Know what your problems are, why you do what you do. Don't let your sins weigh you down. And when it says neither let iniquities rise up, don't fall back into it again. You gotta fight. It's going to be a constant fight, a battle in your spirit. Go ahead. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins. Woe means destruction unto them that are bound, meaning you can't escape from this sin. It's always there. It wakes up with you. It goes to sleep with you. It's there. That demon is there. Woe unto you. Go ahead. And covered with their iniquities. Go ahead. Like as a field is covered over with bushes, and the path thereof covered with thorns, that no man may travel through. It is left undressed and is cast into the fire to be consumed there. So if you're bound with your sin, the Bible says you're going to be destroyed. That's that brother where the seven demons have come in, sat down, and have got residence in your head. The seven demons have gotten you. Here it is, 2 Peter 2 and 20. Let's go there. Saying the same thing. Watch this. And a lot of times what that helps us in our, like we read in Wisdom of Solomon about it was we were cured by the word. Meditating, find the scriptures that pertain to you. Write them down. And just sit there and meditate on them scriptures and meditate on them over and over and over. You got it like that? 2 Peter 2 verse 20. For if, at the, mm -hmm. for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world... Remember we read about the unclean spirit leaving? This is the same thing Peter's talking about. Read it again. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein. And you are entangled again with the sin that had left. But he came back. Homosexuality. I'm back. No! 
<laughs> Whatever it is. And I'm like that. It's like no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is. Go ahead. And overcome. And overcome. You are overcome by that sin that at one time you have, were escaped from. Go ahead. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Your latter end is worse than at the beginning. You you had a, a weed problem. You was good, now you, you, you fighting through it, you getting counsel, you fighting it. Now you decide one day to come bring it back. And you get that one spliff that was sprayed with rope spray or something. You take one thing, boom, your mind is gone. Right, you saw that friend, you saw that so-called friend that used to supply you. Seven you just came legends. back. See the connect. Now you That's got seven connection. demons. Yeah. Tom, Dick, Harry, Charles, whatever, all up in your head. That's why you gotta cut them off. And they all talking to you at the same time. You <laughs> You got the straight jacket on. We've seen many cases like that. Many cases. Don't think we're just talking off the top of our head. Yes, right. Many cases. You finished that, I thought? 21. Go ahead. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. You see that? It's better for you brothers never to have known this truth than to what? Than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. You're like that dog that returned to his vomit. The word soul is pig. The pig that returned and wallowing in the mud. That's what mine means. Okay? You don't be like that. Don't turn back. Don't be like Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife? The angel said, don't look back. She said, I just got to look. Ba bam Finished. So that's what Peter's saying. Don't go back to your wickedness. Last scripture, 1 Corinthians 16, 15. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 15. I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Icaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. The only thing we're to be addicted to is the ministry of the saints. This truth. That's the only addictions we should have in our lives. So now you've got this, you've, you've heard several uh, problems that afflict our people. We talked about sex, drugs, and alcohol. You also touched on the three ways to overcome. That's confession, separation, prayer, and fasting. The application of the word. So tonight was a big lesson, so I pray that all of you, especially you officers, meditate on it. Because our job is to become counselors, better counselors in this truth.